Well, this is a little, uh, a little strange. Oh, the, the thing stopped blinking because I clicked off of the window. Pardon me. Hello, this is, we are doing something that's a little bit unusual for Mondays for a little bit. This is a fan game of two series, both the Toho Project series and also the Mega Man Battle Network series. I think my aspect ratio is off now, actually, looking at this. I could have sworn that I had uh, taken a screenshot of this and done the scaling and it was a 1 to 2 aspect ratio. That may not be the case. If it isn't, I will have that fixed for next time. But for the time being, I suppose just deal with it. So this game has a bit of an interesting history to it. You might notice the copyrighted material banner down there over what used to be a copyright um, copyright information there. And the reason for that is that this game was in development by a couple of Japanese fans of both series who were releasing it as a fan game of free thing. And then they started to seek funding for it on a platform that is not, but is similar to Patreon. And this attracted some issues with, issues with Capcom because they were perceived as basically uh, asking for money for the game itself. Uh, trying to monetize the game, which is about 85% true, I would say, in this case. Because, yes, they were asking for money for certain updated versions of it, but you didn't have to pay them to play it. And as a result, the game got DMCA'd, and another group of fans picked it up and are currently continuing development on it. So at some point, this may actually get finished. Who knows? But if not, well... Yeah. Let's go ahead and let's start a new game. You can see that I have completed the main game. But... You know, starting a complete file, that is not really very helpful of a thing to do. On a stream like this. So let's go ahead and let's get into this now. Oh wow, they're sending us right into things right now. That's uh Hmm. All units out of control. Uh gotcha. What's Can I get more information here? Or are we just having this uh mystery villain? Oh, I see you're taking after Dr. Wiley. Uh, saying you're going to screw up the world and referring to it with the terminology deleted despite hating network society. Although, who knows for sure where, uh, where all that's going. Okay. Eureka in this case being a combination of Europe and America, which is actually sort of a thing that already exists in the Battle Network games, but is not set up like that as a, a name. So this isn't exactly the world of Battle Network, but it's very much the same idea. Let me get my cursor off of the screen. Hacked and taken over by evil scientists. Well, yes, because everything has... We have the basically everything is online issue as with Battle Network. And that's sort of becoming an issue in the real world with all of these Internet of Things devices. You'd be surprised how easy it is for somebody to take control of one of those and basically, with some of them, like, lock you out of your house, make you unable to use the stove, all kind of shit like that. Ravaged by Cyber Warfare. Mm. Eh. Oh, okay, they were... Destroyed all computer net- Well, that's going to put a bit of a damper on the entire plot, isn't it?
Yeah, people would get kind of mad without internet for any period of time. Uh, that sounds like a really stupid idea, but... Let's go ahead. Eh. Determined to create a new network. And with no real information past that about what the deal is, if there was a, a guiding motivation involved. Oh, somebody's talking at us. I do that all the time. The solution is just to never have to be anywhere for anything. Oh no. Oh boy. Well, that makes a marked change from the Battle Network series at large. In that, like, there's nobody in the series who's, well, I guess we don't really see, uh, well, blah, 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 blah. we don't really see anybody who uses their Navi for, like, civilian functionality of the, you know, alarm clock or anything like that outside of LAN in those games, and Mega Man is genuinely a very good dude. So I don't really know if that's different, but we are immediately getting a very different sort of dynamic because Alice is, like, actually a pretty good kid, and her net navi Shanghai is an absolute asshole. Let's take a look at, well, I probably shouldn't bother with this stuff because that's, uh, learning the mechanics that we, uh, don't have to deal with just yet until we actually get somewhere in the game. But let's have an exploration of the, the room here. Oh, Alice is upset that people are going to tease her because she's a nerd. All I can say is just ignore other people. It makes things a lot easier. So, oh! Pog champ. Oh, hi, Tav. How's it going? How are you this evening? Also, yeah, it's implied and made extremely clear much later that our Navi is doing some incredibly illegal shit that we don't know about. Excuse me. Which, again, marked difference from the real Battle Network series, but also kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, can we, can we talk to the mirror? No, apparently we cannot check out the mirror. And also, yeah, we can't jack in anything right now. We can't go on the net in any real, cap in any capacity at all until we start getting to the tutorial, which we'll do in a moment. Oranges. I haven't had an orange in a couple of months. Damn it, now I want some oranges. What's going on in the backyard? Uh, apparently a lot of green shit that has nothing to do with us. TV. Also uses to control your other home electronics. That sounds like a huge bad idea! Bridge. Oh no, too bad for her. Also, yeah, a screen on it for reasons. That's another thing that I think actually exists now. No, I want to check the... the little kitchen area over here. <laughs> Slice of toast before we run to school. That's sort of the typical. Unfortunately, the Shinkies don't seem to own a toaster. Yes, even though 
in the actual Toho games, Alice is her own person whose last name is Margatroid. In this game, she is Shinky's daughter, which is a common thing that people are like, oh yeah, this is a thing that exists for the the pre-Windows games. Basically, this game runs very, very heavily off of a lot of... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Headcanons, let's go with. That's the, the nice, simple word. The f basically runs very heavily off of, you know, stuff in the fandom, memes, all of that. And what's going on in here? Gotcha. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, obviously we can't really explore anyone's house, but that's not going to stop me from looking around the town and talking to some NPCs. And see if any of them have anything useful to say other than, hey, go to school, you gremlin. This kid just calls his big sis and is not anybody. It's just sort of a nickname. Alright, bench. Oh. They took away the entire playground because kids were getting hurt. And yeah, that person explains uh, our folder, which is basically our deck. These games are basically like card games, but also RPGs. Uh, nobody's in either of these two buildings. Basically says that your deck can only have 30 cards in it. Yeah, that's that's pretty normal for for this thing, this series. Your fridge broke down. You wonder if this net crime group is involved. Why would they be? Fridges break down often. Actually, we've had a lot of refrigerator trouble trouble over the last year and a half. Not like horrific amounts, but more than enough. I wonder if some net crime group is behind it. Wait, our fridge doesn't connect to the internet. Look at this big fucking house. And it's incredibly garish walls and roof. Gee whiz. Whoever owns this place has no taste whatsoever. And we got a place with a little bit of a garage door looking thing there. That's not what it's supposed to be, but it looks like it. Say it sounds like where I grew up, but it's increasingly urban sprawl is happening, so yeah, that's not amazing. And this person has not seen the sun ever, according to this mugshot, and sells us sub chips, which are basically usable items on the overworld. We've got a couple here firewall. This is the equivalent of sneak run from the main series that lets us avoid weaker enemies for a little bit of. A little bit of while. You've never seen the sun ever. You've told me this before. My question is, how do you get to the grocery store in places while completely avoiding the sun? Do you just have, like, a parasol or something? Are, are, are you actually Romelia, who is... Uh, it, in canon, the character Romelia is a vampire who carries around an umbrella to protect herself from the sun, so... Like... Is that you? Are you actually the two who Tev? That would be fucked up. <laughs> Where was I? Okay, um... Crack Tool. This is the equivalent of Unlocker in the main game and lets us open up locked uh, mystery data, which is basically the equivalent of chests. And usually those have some pretty interesting rewards. If not good, at least fairly unique. And Virus Scan. This is the equivalent of Locate Enemy, which is here drastically reduced in price. And by drastically, I mean it's 3,000 zenny cheaper, which, holy fuck, a 30% discount. That is good. And this will increase the chances by a lot that you will fight the same fight that you just fought if you use it on the internet. If you use it without having fought a previous battle, well, I think you just waste it. I've never... I've never done that because it would be silly. 
And they've got a lot of people here telling us about this middle school. It's almost like we're a student and we have to go here because we do. So let's take a look around before we go upstairs. Okay, so we can't go in the staff room. Obviously, we can't really go much anywhere right now, but we can at least get a feel from our for our area. Class 2-2. Well, they tell you where to go. That's nice. Arabstan. Yeah, they worked real hard on that name. And apparently there's a lot of... A lot of stuff going on in the world. I actually just explained subchips, but we didn't get to see any of the healing ones. Yeah, the writing in this game is, um... It's of a quality, that's for sure. And that quality is unbelievably variable. Yeah. I have to go in the storage room and it's not... Well... Yeah, we can't do anything about that. The multi-purpose room, that's a description. Oh, uh, Alice wants to be a good student. That's kind of endearing. Because at her implied age, I was a little shit. There's a fire hydrant of some kind. Yeah, let's hope you never see that used, because a fire in the school would really suck. Oh yes, I... They are over tutorializing a little bit by telling us that. Alice, who just straight up forgot where her classroom is, but also we can run into the other one, why not? The regular system, this is a thing that I didn't actually get a chance to explain, because I haven't explained any of the battle mechanics whatsoever. I will do that in more depth in a bit, but this kid is going to tell us that we can do something to force ourselves to draw a specific chip first, provided that we have enough regular memory to do it. And yes, there's things to pick that up, to uh, increase that with. It's not much to memorize, my friend. Yes, I'm in the wrong classroom, but I'm here to get dialogue. Oh, we don't get to see what that is. <laughs> I think the teacher of 2-1 is into some weird stuff. <laughs> Here to get dialogue. Oh, listen to this, nerd. And yay, we got an HP memory. Those give us a bonus 200... Uh, 200... That would be fucking busted. It gives us a bonus plus 20 permanent max HP. Which is very nice. Our maximum that we can get from that plus our starting health is 1,000. And we start at 200. So we're up to 220 already. So I'm not going to complain about that. Yeah, we don't have uniform. There's no uniforms at the school. It's just that all the NPCs mostly look the same. Yeah, I've already talked to that kid. Oh, I see. All the nerds and the rich kids are in 2-2, right? I just walked through this kid. Awesome! <laughs> I'm a ghost! Ooh! I'm in ghost school. Ooh! <laughs> and that kid is telling us, hey, we're gonna be visiting places overseas using the internet at some point. <laughs> Wrong! The internet is a series of tubes. <laughs> it's not a dump tr It's not a big truck! There we go! <laughs> yes! <laughs> ah, series of tubes. Classic. Oh, who's this kid? Her head looks a little bit far forward on her torso.
Oh well. Kid sits the class immediately. Amelia, who we already discussed a little bit. Oh, you're just very short. Okay. Oh, who's this kid? We didn't get the other kid's name! Damn it! <laughs> Alright, so here's Mari, is her name. Mari, who has the nephew Marissa. That's, uh. That's some good naming. This kid doesn't sound like an egomaniac or anything. Oh, look at these nerds. Oh, and here, who's the tiny kid? Oh, this will be Romelia. Yeah, she does look, well, noticeably smaller than everybody else. With her Navi Sakuya. Unfortunately, I have bad news for her. We're going to be kicking her ass quite often through the game, so... You know, she, she should just shut up in advance. She could probably have saved herself a lot of frustration. Okay, Rika is the other kid that we haven't met yet. Oh, get a load of this nerd! Tank man. Well, I think I know which one of us is gonna beat whose ass here. Uh oh, I think it's time for baby fights apparently. I might be overselling it a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so a bunch of a bunch of these nerds want a challenge. Gotcha. Well, I I think I know a couple of solutions to uh make sure that we win the competition. One of them is pocket sand. You all know what pocket sand is, right? Oh, I was about to say, they take attendance that deep into the day in Japanese schools. What's in the chart on here? Class schedule. Gotcha. And this is just another... Another electronic blackboard. The port is locked. Oh. Well, apparently... We're not, we're too weak to break a lock, I guess. Or something. <laughs> Looks like I won't be on toilet duty anytime soon. I do, I do like that. And the PC room is all the way down here. Let's sneak in through the back. I don't think it matters for cutscene reasons. But I could be wrong about that. Ooh, look at the big nerd with the purple hair. Hello. I believe this is... Her name is Miss Rikako. Rikako? Uh, which is a bit of a problem when you have a Rikako and a Rika in the same game. But who am I to judge? That was a problem that existed with the original games. In, like, the second or whatever Toho game that these showed up in. Out of nearly 20 at this point that are, like, actually part of the main series and not weird spin-offs. And this is where we're gonna learn how to murder things. It look like animals and batteries and all kind of other things, actually. Ooh, that palette looks absolutely fucked. I 
don't know if this is an issue with this particular version or not, but there are some massively questionable graphics throughout this entire game in terms of quality and like even some of these the shading seems a little bit facile but like this just kind of looks almost corrupted also I think there was a typo in there but I was too busy talking cover them after the exam okay Alright, so the kid, the couple of these kids who don't really know how to... I guess it makes sense to have this as a thing in school, because it's so important on the series, to the series, on a series level. The Battle Network series, anyway. Oh, I know how to do this. So, we're going to get a slightly extended tutorial compared to the regular game. A uh, regular game in this case being the official Battle Network games. And we can see for a start here, just barely, that these tiles look like trash. I don't know what the deal is, because I've seen a lot of video on the internet of this game, and the tiles look fine. So I guess there's probably a graphic replacement patch out there somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I have not picked it up at any point. So, we don't get any tutorial for these first few fights. We're going to be doing this all on our own. At the beginning of at the beginning of the battle or at the start of each turn, excuse the the bunk there of me accidentally slamming my de my chair into my desk. We get shown this. This is basically where we get to choose our hand. And we're given what starts out as just five randomly selected from the deck, but we draw more to replace everything that was used prior. And to do this, I'm going to select this shotgun one to start with. This is an attack that attacks in a T shape in front of us. Basically, if we were at, uh, can I show the, can I show the entire battle? Yes, I can select. I'm bringing a knife to a ray gun fight. Yes. So, we're over here in the middle. If we move forward, this attack will hit this panel right in front of us and the entire column to a head three times for 20 damage a hit. So, we're going to take that. In addition, once we choose one chip, we can take any other chip with the same name or any other chip with the same code and the and provided that all chips in our hand are the all chips in our selection over here are the same, we can choose one, we can choose, well, any number really, but we can choose any with this asterisk code. So in this case, stun game, which is just going to grant a stun effect to the above, to the, uh, the prior chip, which is useless here, but I'll show off picking it anyway, just for reasons of showing it off. You move around with the D-pad, you use chips using the A button, and you can fire your little basic buster using the B button. In in my case, I'm doing this with a PS4 controller. This game is for the PC, so you have to assign keys to all these buttons, and it uses the Game Boy Advance controls. So in my case, it's square button to shoot, X button in place of A, and L1 and R1 in place of the shoulders. I don't know why I tried to show the camera, which I did, by the way. This is... Okay, cross shape explosion. Gotcha. So we're going to take this. We're going to take the panel shot. We'll take the power plus 10, even though it is completely useless. Also, another thing. We have this little icon up here that represents our character's mood. When we take out multiple enemies with one attack, uh, Shanghai gets really happy. And the next attack she uses recovers 10%, I believe, of her HP automatically. If we counterattack an enemy with the correct timing, which we're probably not going to see for a little bit of a while here, she enters what's called full synchro, which turns her, which gives her next chip attack double damage. 
And this sword takes out... Did, did I just pronounce it sword on purpose? I... And by on purpose, I mean by accident. I may very well have. But that attacks the entire column. The knife is just the one panel in front of you. It sounds pretty useless, but it hits decently hard, so... It's usable. It's not ideal, however. So here we have a bit of a tough choice. We're... We're kind of limited in terms of what we can do. We can't set up a combo to clear this in a single turn, or even a single attack. So, we have to look at our options a little carefully here. This Recover 20 is not very useful. The Shotgun deals decent damage. The Ray Gun will let us uh, chip a lot of health off of the Ray Cannon in the back there. This area grab will take panels from the enemy's front column and add them to ours for a little while. Which will restrict the movement of that enemy down here, this Kadama, but that is kind of worthless. And Buster Amp will increase our Buster Damage by one for the duration of the battle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these. And we're going to... Also, yes, you will notice that one big issue is that the Buster shoots mortifyingly slow. However, we do have a charged attack ability. And the charge attack at present does 10 times our regular Buster damage. So, yeah, we got, like, really bad draws, so we're definitely losing the race here a little bit. It's okay, it's a plot point. You can't really do anything about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, we do get a reward from this fight, unlike the previous four tutorial battles. And from this, we just get 60 zenny. That's okay, we need the money at this point in the game. Write it down before you forget. Well, that's what the video is for. And more NPC dialogue. Zero point zero seven. That's a lot of button mashing, but there are definitely things that can clear fights instantly. And of course, the rich kid is being a little asshole, because, as usual, that's how rich people do, I guess. Oh, she's gonna get even worse, Tankman, don't worry. <laughs> 6,000, that's slightly overkill. I don't think anything gets anywhere near that without some serious tricks. Alright, so what's the, what's the information you've got on us? This sounds like a plot. Suspicious Navi buried some chips in Genso area at midnight. Gotcha. So... We've got to... We've got to go on the, the internets at some point. And... Go and... Get things. Yeah, we've heard they exist. They're gonna come up in the plot, don't worry. Yes, we've heard about people having fridge issues. One house is for- Oh, that's one hell of a fridge! Like, what kind of a fridge goes so apeshit that it can freeze an entire house solid? That sounds like a- a problem. You made your own antifreeze- oh. You probably should be a few grades up, shouldn't you? Yeah, the education system really working, apparently. Watch out for the suspicious folks, yeah. It's okay, nothing at this point in the game is real. <laughs> the fridge was running Skyrim on it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Well, that is probably a thing that would exist. Todd Howard does want to move as much Skyrims as possible. Well, let's go, let's get back home, go on the internets, 
Talk to the teacher. Be sure to head straight home. Yeah, it's... Fine, I don't think anything else is really going on right now. I'm gonna take a quick browse. Yeah, so... Yes, it is. We can... We can jack in here, apparently. The R button will let you jack in, and this is how you explore the internet world and go into dungeons and stuff, and it is generally always accompanied by a neat little light show in these games. This one is kind of underwhelming compared to some of the others in the actual Battle Network series, which at some point I will most assuredly show off. Let's see if any of the little programs in here have anything of use to say. Ooh, we got a... We got one extra reg regular memory there. That's nice. And we're encountering a level 2 enemy as soon as we... Just log in anywhere. This kid... This kid is trying to get us killed. This gun hopper too. This thing is a grass type, I believe. Or wood element as they're called in this game. And you can get an idea for how it moves very slowly. When it jumps onto a blinking panel, it will attack you with that shotgun blast right afterward, which is the same as the one in the shotgun chips. Unsurprisingly, if you kill enemies, you will usually get a chip with an attack similar to theirs. And also unsurprisingly, well, maybe not, what I'm going to try to do is try to have a folder that flows as well as possible so I can just do as much as possible per turn. And we'll go ahead and save in... It's a little unnecessary, but I'm definitely reaching a point of getting quite save happy. This game can get pretty tough. Not for a while, I don't think, but still, best to be safe rather than sorry. Oh no, this person has no eyes. You don't seem weird or anything. Someone's working on the fridge. Oh no, it's Todd Howard come to install Skyrim on our fridge. A technician from Nine Ball Appliances. <laughs> oh no. Um, anyone who knows anything about the series will immediately know, oh, that might not be a, a good choice to choose, but these characters don't know that. On the other hand, I'm thinking of Armored Core and anyone who knows anything about that will know Nineball from Armor Core, aka Hustler1, aka a killer AI of death who has like the best mech in the entire game, and will absolutely fuck you up. So, yes, let's, uh... It's kind of like... Buying something from Satan Company, I guess. Except... Worse. <laughs> Don't shop anywhere called LexCorp. There we go. The fridge malfunctioned because a virus got in. Okay. And you're gonna hook us up with a thing? I mean, there's barely any getting in the way to do. It's... Like, there should be just a USB port somewhere or something? Oh wait, USB doesn't exist in this series. Well, let's go ahead... Get on the PC, get on the Intar webs, and see what's a thing we can do. This place is pretty big. Oh, we've got a we got a bunch of nerds here. Oh, I get it. Uh, have I ever mentioned that? Like, it seems like a lot of people who are fans of this series really oversell the amount of weird adult-oriented stuff in it, I would kind of say that, generally, this series is probably good for 10 and up, but, like, people just throw in a bunch of weird things like this, and, you know, at least I think this guy stops just, just short of being, uh, I think this guy at least stops just short of asking Shanghai to step on him, but still... And this is teaching us about 
teleports and... Or, well, they call them link gates in this game, but... Basically, this area becomes a teleport hub. Head to the square, find out about things. You heard some suspicious nephews were causing trouble. Gotcha. Is in area two. That's not too hard to get to. There's a little bit of stuff we can look around at before we head anywhere. Actually, not yet. Never mind. Uh, we get that starting later in the game, but there's a lot of extras to check out. So, this is our first look at an internet area. This is designed very similarly to the internet of Battle Network 3, where everything is all thin paths, and there's a main street that's a different color, which they stopped doing it that way after after Battle Network 3, and instead had the main, had the main street be a larger path, because just having the path be a different color is not going to be good game design for people with certain types of colorblindness. So, yes. This is admittedly a bit of a step back in terms of game design compared to the official games. Let's get a look at what we're dealing with here. It is garbage, mostly. But we've got a nice combo to start with here. We can do a quick area grab. Knife this Junk's enemy, which just throws bombs at us. And take out the Panel Mole with the Wide Sword. AKA just Sword. I'm probably gonna fuck up some of these names because I'm used to the ones from the main series. At the end of each fight, depending on how we do, which is based on time and not getting hit, and moving no more than two panels, we get a Busting Rank. The numbers are different for regular enemies versus bosses, but the busting rank helps determine what item we get. So it's a good idea to get as high as possible. And we get a chip based on the last enemy that we that we killed if we're getting a chip out of the battle. So in this case, because we killed the panel mole second, we get a panel shot one out of it. Spinning, floating, yeah. I've... Well, I didn't explain them, but I definitely used some of them already. Again, Mystery Data is basically the chests in the game. Blue is one-time rewards. Purple is one-time rewards that you have to spend a crack tool to get. And green are randomized. And after a point, the randomized ones can start becoming trapped, and you will fight enemies if you open them sometimes. And yeah, I just explained that. Unfortunately, sometimes things are a little outside of your control. And we got a shotgun one in. S-code is pretty decent in this game, but we'll be looking at that later on, probably. And there we go, a double delete. This gets us an increase to our busting rank. In fact, so much so that we got S, which is the highest rank possible, and we got an asterisk code panel shot. That is going straight into the folder. I don't really like the panel shots very much because their damage does not really compensate very well for the fact that they steal a panel from you. Usually from you. Sometimes from the enemies if you use it at the front of the field. But that can be a problem against a lot of bosses later on. Can you explain anything to us? Yeah. The green Road is the main street. You won't get lost if you follow it. Later on, that is a little untrue. But for now, it is true that if you follow the main road, you will not get lost, but you also will not find a whole lot of extra things. So let's see if we can't defeat this Kadama second. And by second, I mean last. And you can see its attack. It's basically the same as the Metools, or... Sorry, this is Battle Network parlance. The Metors. And they just shoot a shockwave forward. However, it's a lot harder to predict in this game compared to the official Battle Network games. 
to get counters easy more easily. So I don't really like them very much. And we get the Shot Wave A chip, which I suppose is probably supposed to be more like Shock Wave, but maybe the translator forgot what Shock Waves were. And also forgot that Wave is a four letter word, and it's instead Shot Wav. Which, granted, the way they were translated in all the Battle Network games except for BN1 was Shock Wav, Sonic Wav. And then the later ones actually had the full word wave, but if you're going to reduce it to a four-letter word, please at least fix that. There's... I will not kid around with anybody. There is definitely some jank in this game that I have opinions about. Also, this Chungus dodged our attack. What a... What an asshole. Just because you've got sunglasses doesn't give you the right to be a dick, okay? Oh, somebody dropped a, uh, a permissions cube here. I think the term is supposed to be pass cube, but... Yeah. Basically, it's somebody just put up a door for no good reason. And we get some more junks here. They give us... They give us those dust bomb chips, so they are good enemies to try and bust at a high rank. You can see that they're pretty easy to deal with. There are later versions of them that are absolute rat bastards, though, so... We'll take the easy stuff while we can. And will that give us a better code? It gives us M. That is usable eventually, but for the moment, we're kind of just gonna groan a little bit about that. And yeah, you can see that that P-Cube is broken because this one is actually acting appropriately in flashing lights. Shops. Shops are shops. And in this game, there are a lot of things that are completely unlimited. Oh, we can buy HP memories here. Obviously, only a fixed number of those, but... It is shocking the amount of things that have no limitation whatsoever on purchase in this game. And we may be abusing that at some point for the chip traders, which are a thing that we will see later on. But for now, we got power plus 10, which we've seen already. That boosts the chip before it. Recover 20 in asterisk code. I guess that's nice to have. Venom shot. This shoots... A shot three squares ahead that it's only that target square but poisons in a nice little cross around it so that's a pretty powerful thing we will probably end up using a lot at some point and heat sword this is basically just the sword that we've been using that hits a whole column but it's much stronger and it's fire elemental so that's pretty nice and there's a quick grand over there. Does the shopkeeper know about that? A knife L that is... I think we have some knife Ks in here. Yeah, those things are absolute fucking garbage. Get them out of here. I don't even think there's any, like, K-coded Navi chips to use in this game. Oh yeah, spoiler alert. We can gain chips from fighting Navis later. And those will be pretty big attacks. And... Some of them will possibly end up being mainstays, depending on what we end up picking up. Alright, this tiny Oni enemy. Let's see if we can get you as our last kill. Because you can see it does that, that chain thing, which is basically... It, it basically gives us the Scorpion special, you know? And yes, it will deal a respectable amount of damage, and by that I mean 30, so not really. But also will stun the target when we grab it. And there we go, our our electric chain one. That is That's gonna be useful. Especially in S code. But that might take a little bit before we do anything with it. We're gonna scan the area a little little further before we go to the square, which is just over there. Let me select everything in the correct order would be a smart idea first. And yeah, this is why panel shots are kind of a pain in the ass. 
is because of this. Also, using a chip while you're charging your buster will end your buster charge immediately. Oh, that was well-timed. I actually was trying for that, and I managed to pull it off. We got a counter at the end of a battle. When we kill an enemy with a counter, we get those little stars by our busting rank, which gives us a chance of picking up various uh, bits of junk data. In this case, we get an error fragment. The type of junk data we get depends on the target's element. So I think that thing is like electric type. Anyway, we can't go to the next area. It's over here. Another one of these? All right. And that is a sword L, a sword. And get rid of that knife. One thing that I have not gotten around to explaining is that while that that number of megabytes here is also... While this is the number that determines whether or not you can set something as a regular chip, which we still haven't done because nothing in here is that lightweight, really. Except for recover, basically. It also determines how many of a chip you can have in your folder. If I remember correctly, the values go... If it's less than 20, you can have 5. If it's 20 to 29, you can have 4. 30 to 39 is 3, 40 to 49 is 2, and 50 and up, you can only have 1. I would advise against taking my word for that for sure, until we find out later from an NPC who I might forget to talk to, but yes. What's going on? Some dicks came in from the A from the AN area? Okay. You're currently building a, building a message board. Nobody uses those things anymore. Everybody's just on Reddit now. And YouTube comments. And phasing through NPCs. Check out the subchip merchant. I'm sure money is going to be a little bit tight here. Half energy. This recovers half of our max health. That's nice. Antivirus. This is a nice thing to have. This is also known as Untrap in the main games, and it removes all traps from green mystery datas for as long as you're jacked in. So it's a good idea to use these once you start getting to the area where they... where trapped mystery data shows up just immediately. And you can get some amazing returns on your investment from doing that. Untrap slash antivirus, good shit, always use. Well, always use if you're going into a place where it would matter. And Crack Tool. So, unfortunately, buddy, those subchips are not going to do you jack diddly shit. Uh, let's take a look at the vendor. <clears throat> 1500 HP, eight, 1500 for an HP memory. 1500 for an area grab A. That is pretty good. Although A is kind of an underwhelming code, if I remember correctly. Gravity Ball 1 in asterisk code for 2,500. I mean, Gravity Orb makes enemy heavy. This thing goes slow as hell, but when it connects with an enemy, they will crack every panel they step to for a while. And when something comes off of a cracked panel, it will usually break it, making it unusable for some time. So, that's pretty nice. M-Ray Gun B for 3,000. That's basically just ray gun, but more damage. Railgun 1G for 5,000 is a much faster firing electric attack that cracks the panel you're on and every panel up to your target. It's a very simple linear shot and 100 damage. That's pretty good, all considered. But we're not going to buy anything just yet. We're going to go over to these geeks. And this should be a pretty easy fight. Let's take these nerds out. Come on. Punk bro and little bro. Or little punk, rather. And we get some different music. This is a mini boss of sorts against these generic navvies who are just going to warp around and use a couple of chip attacks. Let's try to make the most use out of our full synchro by grabbing a sword first and then using a knife. Alright, come on, get 
getting close. Look at that! 160 damage. That's pretty good. I fucked that up and I got flinched by that attack before it even came out, but we didn't lose the panel, so that's nice. However, yes, those enemies just straight up used chips, so that thing was hitting me for 40 with his ray guns. Imagine if we got hit by the sword, that would not be... That would kind of ache. Above and below meat, that sounds like a, a ramp, maybe. Yeah, get the hell out of there, nerds. Hmm. Good question. The entrance to hell during the War of Armageddon? I don't know. But we don't have a whole lot of places available to us, so let's go take a look. This screwed me over for a long time because, as we're going to see, as we're going to see, it's not a super obvious location. And yes, we're taking a bunch of stuff that, uh, we aren't going to really be able to use this fight. Just to cycle through our folder better. And look at all them ray guns. That counter was not as part of a kill, so we stunned the enemy, but we didn't get an error fragment out of it. I don't know, buddy. That cube is gone. So... When I thought we're above and below meat, I figured it'll be at one end or the other of a ramp. It's not. It's underneath an overpass on this bottom layer. Technically, above and below don't meet there, but okay. Oh, I did... I did that with terrible timing. Y'all are getting to see that I'm actually garbage at video games today. Who would have known? Answer anyone who's seen me stream Rayman 2. Or Hollow Knight, for that matter. There we go. There's a crack in the floor. Well, yeah, of course you can't see it. Isometric perspective. And we got some compressed data. They don't know what it is for sure. Apparently Shanghai has never heard of 7-Zip. So that's... That's great. Oh, that's just kind of silly. Well... I guess we could jack out, or... We got a tiny amount of money. This is actually a thing that is kind of frustrating. Money is pretty hard to get in this game. We're going to grab us a Venom Shot P. <laughs> That's... There's a joke in there somewhere, but I don't want to make it. And you can see 24 megabytes. We can fit four of those into a folder. And I know that I was just taking out the P's earlier. But again, I... Maybe you should change how I talk here a little bit. But we're going to actually bring that back in. And we'll we'll bring in shotgun one P as well. Do we have any other P code stuff in here? No, we don't. So yes, we're going to reintroduce that to our folder. Do we have you code dust bombs? No. We do, however, have these. So I'm just doing a tiny little tweak here because I realized, oh, I actually have some stuff in here that I can use to ease things slightly. And yeah. 
I just want to have that Venom shot in there because it's pretty useful pretty soon. Oh no, I wonder if our refrigerator is shooting ice or not. Oh no, it's almost like this plot is very, very predictable. Just like, just like a Mega Man Battle Network game. They're all really easy to figure out. Gotcha, so let's, let's go into our first dungeon, which is basically the first dungeon from the first game, except ice instead of fire. Yes, Shanghai, it's a fucking freezer. Or fridge. They, they seem to be a little bit dicey on which one it is. But on the other hand, I also have a freezer with a fridge built into the same appliance, so yeah. Alright, so big ice chunks. We can't do anything about it, but let's explore the area first anyway to see what the deal is. Crawfish and fan viruses seem to be aqua elements. Electric and poison attacks are strong against aqua types. Yes! In this game, they added two elements into the main four circle that the Battle Network series uses in Earth and Poison. And also, everything has two weaknesses in this game as opposed to one. So, here we've got... The Scroons, which is a really silly name for an enemy. And these are indeed water types, so... They just get absolutely laid out by poison attacks. That's why I wanted that Venom shot. They attack by shooting a very slow, hilariously slow even, little gust of wind at us. Oddly enough, this can actually become a problem in later fights, just because it will trip you up against certain other attacks. Instead of just having it rocket down the lane at us, it just gunks up our entire battlefield by moving even slower. And from that, we get the cold air chip. Heat exhaust system. We should take a few detours. We can do that in a moment. Over here, let's get another reg up one. So this cold air chip is not terribly strong, but it pushes anything it hits backwards. It says forward, but technically that's only true from your perspective. Like, it pushes them further to the back of their area. As in, I'm going to be referring to this direction is backwards, and this direction is forwards for the enemy. And for me, this direction is forwards, and this direction is backwards. Closer to the line is forwards, further away is backwards. That moment when I'm teaching you all what back and forth are. Back and forth, I swear with the wind, resolution slips away again. I can't even quote Faith no more without fucking it up, so... Enjoy me being completely worthless at words. Get these fuckers out of here. Give me... Uh, C code is good for that, actually. Okay, yeah, we already asked you about elements. You will also notice we're not sliding around on the ice in this floor, which is actually quite good. That makes our lives significantly easier. Alright, show me potato salad. I want a good code out of this. Damn! Speaking of which, actually, there is something I'll show you real quick. The library is your list of where all the chips are, so you can take a look at those. As in, it doesn't tell you their locations, but you can have a look at what you have, look at their in-game descriptions, which are very good in this game. Well, decent at least. And you can highlight something, press A, and it will cycle through its code. So we can see that this Ella Chain has a star code to it, and by star I mean asterisk. And even Cold Air 1 does, but 
Those enemies just decided to be really stingy. Maybe they were upset because I was making fun of their names. Whoa! Sorry, my chair is old and janky. Uh, barrier. This is a pretty standard defense type of thing. We're going to put this in the folder. In place of a recover 20, because I don't think we're going to need it that much. And it's, it's 8 to... Yeah. So we cannot register it, which is unfortunate. Because just casting a barrier at the start of a fight is pretty useful. Let's you take a free hit without getting killed. So I think that's going to... Yeah, that's going to give us a triple. Come on! Yes! Oh, that's nice. That's pretty spicy. As I'm wont to say occasionally. Let's get rid of that one panel shot. It says terrain power-up, which I believe means that depending on the terrain of the shot panel, you deal elemental damage, but don't quote me on that. Aw, uh, come on. Let me get it. Let me get it. Alright, so we've got a claunch here. So this goofus will just wait here for a bit before doing that. Ooh, I think the cold air does multiple hits at the end of its trajectory if the enemy is in the back row. I did not remember that being a thing. And the, uh, the, the shrimp there looked a little freaked out. Hi there, Andy Shack. You heard a lot... You heard a lot of this about this game. It's pretty good. I've enjoyed it quite a bit, and especially considering that it's a fan project, it is very good for that. I've I've played some fan projects that are unceasingly mediocre, and this is not that. Needless to say. Otherwise, I would probably not be streaming it after I played through it once. Then again, I've streamed bits of some games that are quite dreadful because... <laughs> so maybe saying, oh, I wouldn't be streaming it is not necessarily a useful thing. Say it's better than Battle Network 3 or Star Force 3. I cannot weigh in on Star Force whatsoever, but better than BN3 is a tall order, and I would say that it's not. It is very fun. I do love it quite a bit, but it is absolutely not, in my opinion, better than BN3. But again, if you've... If I say, if you've run out of games in the series to play proper, that sounds a little bit like I'm just sort of uh, brushing it off, kind of. But I don't mean to. I'm trying to find everything in this area, by the way, before I advance. And I think two half-energy subchips. There we go. There's the exhaust, uh, the heat data we needed. The exhaust program, rather. It will disappear if we jack out. It really wants to save that ice cream. And as we walk forward, we get a cutscene as the freezer basically explodes and Shanghai gets frozen and we get a phone call from mysterious stranger making a bad joke hired goons wait no that's somebody else's running joke sorry the thing's got a little bit of things got a little bit away from me and yes, this is why I really do say that this is literally just the first dungeon from BN1, but with a different skin. Because over here, uh, well, Letty White Rock is going to take her hat off 
I only just learned recently that Letty Whiterock's name is a reference to an Agatha Christie novel, and it really does turn out that Zun loves Agatha Christie quite a bit. So our friend over here is basically just calling us and taunting us in the middle of this, just like Mr. Match did in BN1. Where would I rank it? Um, Give me a second here to think this out. Because I'm going to say that uh, my ranking of the official games, first of all, goes 3, 5, 6, 2, 1, 4. Uh, best to worst. In that case, I would put this at about where 6 is. So, I mean, keep in mind that I'm a little strange, I know, in that regard, that I'm saying that I like 5 a lot more than most people do. But, yes, I do genuinely love uh, Battle Network 5. And this game is generally very, very good. I would consider 6 to be the, the workhorse with a few minor issues to it. BN3 is borderline untouchable. 5 is my strange favorite. So... Yeah, overall, very strong. Very, very strong. Especially considering, again, fan game. So this is the part where they kind of want you to have learned where everyone lived. And I forgot. Five is definitely one that people are very torn on. So, yeah. Anyway, we got... We got Mari's homemade antifreeze, and we got a battle chip for Marissa. That's neat. At some point, I will have to break out the DS version of 5, if I can get a working DS emulator, or... Or, God willing, if I can find a, 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 a DS that I can hook up a capture... Uh, capture device to. I think that that needs, like, actual hard modding like the 3DS, but I don't know for sure. I'm not an expert when it comes to uh, uh, DS hardware capturing. If that is the case, that would be a little expensive, but an emulator would be quite easy. But I would definitely love to, at some point, stream that. In probably not the most immediate future, but certainly it's somewhere down the line. So, oh. oh, wow, Plastic Allen coming in with the 13 viewer raid, good gracious, bodacious. How is, how is your life going? How was the rest of Sunshine? Can we get a prayer circle for Mr. Plastic Allen, who is currently playing Super Mario Sunshine on the Switch? That poor, poor man. And hello also to Plastic Wife and to Plastic Allen, who is noticing that I padded out my FFZ list a little bit here. He vowed to get all the blue coins or die trying. Oh, buddy, you're, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have quite a fun time, Allen. And this, <laughs> wow. And yes, karmic name too. That is absolutely correct. There, there's basically it's available. For, uh, if you want Toho versions of anything on the internet, it's pretty available. Shockingly, one thing that I have not been able to find, although I would actually kind of love if it was out there, is a Toho themed Advance Wars mod. Because I do enjoy me a little bit of Advance Wars, even though I am super disgustingly garbage at Advance Wars. And I will drop one quick notification to Mia that I am non-binary, so a, a mister is fine too though, so don't don't worry about it. Just just making that public information because yes. And duly noted there, Andy Shack, I have Never played any of the Star Force games, so I don't 100% know what to expect, but I will keep in mind not to expect that. 
you know, Mia, don't don't worry about it. As long as you understand and keep it in mind going forward. I cannot necessarily expect someone to know without knowing me that well, because literally we've talked once in Alan's chat, so... Delude the strategy elements for more action. Interesting. That's... that's alright. That sounds perfectly acceptable. And yes, by the way, I will just note immediately that we are... Uh, did I talk to you? Yeah. Try to conserve our heat data, right. So, I'm choosing more chips than are necessary for my turns, basically in order to manipulate something that is a little further on in the game. You didn't know that I was a waifu with it? Alan, what would you have expected me to be in a 2 game? Besides, it, it fits. I'm a waifu in real life. <laughs> Tab enjoying Claunch. I assume that its second form is called Clauncher, and its full and its final form is called Clawitzer. Oh wait, no, that's a Pokemon joke. Whoops! I don't actually remember. <laughs> Oh, Alan, please. <laughs> if you were alive, that would be a little weirder. <laughs> I mean, I I've heard about your work schedule, sir. <laughs> hey, would you look at that? And we're a little late because the ray guns shoot a little bit slowly. We got ourselves a panel shot, and we got a frozen fragment. Which, basically, these are all, like, special kinds of currency that we use for various stuff. For those of you who have played Battle Network games before, yeah, they're all just variants of bug fragments. You like my overlay. Thank you. I... I'm glad for that. I put like five seconds of work into it. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> and yes, yes Asmo, I would suppose that it does make you a necromancer. Here's another one of those things. We'll be putting those to use later on. Yeah, I've got one left after that. Is there anything else I can sneak real quick? Ooh, a sub member. <laughs> I think I popped it too early. <laughs> I don't remember what the context of that was, but I 100% am not surprised. Uh, some memory, I didn't even explain that. Um, I'm looking at this ranking real quick here. BN2, BN3, BN6, extremely interchangeable. BN5 and the rest. Yes, that is correct, Mia. I, I talked about that at the beginning of the stream, so I guess I could talk about it again at some point. Uh, it's interesting to see someone with BN2 at the top of the list. I... I love BN2, but I admit that it is still a little bit... A little bit raw in a few places. A little bit uh, rough around the edges, if you will. And goddamn is it easy to break in some regards. So, yes, Mia, somebody else picked up this project to continue developing it. And this version came out at the top of the year, actually, so... Yes, it is not dead dead, but it has been drastically uh, not being monetized in any way whatsoever anymore. 
I don't even think the current devs have a Patreon of any sort. Oh, I love... I, I actually mentioned this earlier before you came in, uh, when it was really just Andy Shack and Tav, who is, like, always listening to me, <laughs> that... BN5 is actually, like, my second favorite in the series. The Liberation Mission stuff is a lot of fun. It is really, really neat. I understand why for some people it would be hard to get into, but I love it a lot. And also the ability to switch between playable characters is pretty cool. Yeah, that's fair regarding the style set. The, uh, the style system. Right, look at this nerd. Good job making it this far. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty tiny, and if you're the strongest Navi, this is a little early in the game. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. Cyrano and Letty are... Cerno and Letty are level 1 type of personalities. Level 1 boss type personalities. They're used to getting their asses kicked. <laughs> wow, these... <laughs> Nobody here likes each other. <laughs> the styles definitely are a lot better than Souls. There are a few things they could have done to make Souls better, like the ability to pull them up on command, but definitely I prefer that to... Uh, I definitely admit that the Souls are a bit of a minor issue. That, you know, they could have been better. So, we're going to get a lot of ice panels here. But overall, this boss is pretty easy. I just am a terrible, terrible shot, so I'm going to probably miss a few attacks here. And thankfully, look at... Look at everybody's favorite nine ball here, dodging directly... And I mean directly into my attacks. Also, yes, she's been hit by a poison attack and is still leaking HP, which is pretty great. I haven't fought any of the hardcore boss gauntlets. I've done some of the... I've done some of the extra content. I'm pretty bad at a lot of it. I'm not exactly, like, you know, a super amazing video game player or anything. I try, but goodness knows do I fail. <laughs> and there we go, we just let the boss time out. Da -da 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 oh yeah, there's some parts I I will say there are gonna be some bosses where I am going to absolutely be a little bit salty, probably. Well, we, uh... We got iced pretty badly here. Yeah, quit being such a nerd, Alice. Oh, right. Well, as long as you don't turn into, like, Fate Raikou or anything, I think we'll be okay. Oh! Wow! Th a lot different from what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I take back my thanks. Fuck you, Lethal. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Thank you for the- Thank you for the sub. That is super, super kind of you. <laughs> oh, that- that's funnier than it ought to be, but here we are. <laughs> ah. 
anyway, yes, thank you for the sub, and I'm going to drop a quick... Well, I'm going to drop a quick accidentally hit, turn down the DPI on my mouse, and... Also... <laughs> drop one of those in there for that sound cue. Da -da! Thank you, Getz, man. <laughs> okay. I'm better now, ish. <laughs> Get ice programs from 30 refrigerators. That's a strange thing. But okay. Well, don't worry about whether or not you're going to fail next time, Letty. You're out of the plot for the rest of the game. Oh, that's some noise. Uh, who are we getting talked at by? Or who's this? What's going on here? Going back and forth with no mugshots can be a little bit crusty. At least give us, like, shaded out mugshots or something. Air program, alright? That's definitely a problem, is that BN3 styles are a little bit on the grind-heavy side. So who's this... nerd? I wonder if anyone can tell from the mugshots if there's somebody here who doesn't know this game but knows Toho. Oh, well, they just tell us right away. Medicine and Autonomous Navi. So, no... No operator to find, just something is just going to occur, basically. Eh, it wasn't much of a fluke. I think it was a fluke in the opposite direction because... Cerno just kept sitting on those ice panels. Like, not even trying. Ah, the Zat Brannigan school of dealing with things. Send wave after wave of your own men at the enemy. I am willing to put wave after wave of my own men at your command. <laughs> I don't remember the whole line, so... <laughs> Hmm, so, yeah, just like a regular Battle Network game, really, they are looking for a bunch of elemental-themed programs. That's kind of a recurring plot in, in these games. Well, one in three, anyway. BN3 is definitely where the series lost, uh, where the series found its legs... BN4 cut them off completely and haphazardly stuck two Boktai cartridges in the slots. Which, you know, I actually thought that the crossover content there was pretty good, even if that series was super, super doomed to fail in the West. Probably a little too gimmicky. Although, in that regard, that's basically Kojima at his finest if it's gimmickry, right? Who's hearing about us beating up some nerds? Oh, it's our teacher. Kojima gave you sunburns. <laughs> That's pretty great, actually. <laughs> that is, again, funnier than it should be. <laughs> I'm actually going to put that in there, because... <laughs> That's gonna just pop up out of context at some point, and somebody's gonna be like, What is that? And I'm going to be like, Do I have to tell you about Hideo Kojima existing at all? It. I absolutely do think that the Boktai games were fucking phenomenal, as especially as a concept. Although at the time, it was. I remember it being really hard to get them. Which probably also contributed to the fact that they failed miserably in the, in the States, as far as I know.
Yeah, BN6 definitely, like, polished things the best and went back on some of the issues that 4 and 5 had, most notably how it paced out higher levels of viruses. That was changed and returned to the old style. So it was overall very well designed, but I think that it could have done a, with a little bit of touching up around the edges in terms of the overall content and a couple other things here and there. Also, it's really weird that in both games there are two crosses that share an element. In each case, uh, Gregor has two fire element and Falzar has two... Oh my god, now I can't remember. <sighs> I'm a dumb motherfucker, I shouldn't start talking. I'm gonna look like a fool. Oh yeah, uh, the Falzar had two break element crosses, I believe. So, honestly, what they probably should have done is switch Charge Man and Dust Man between the two games. Or maybe Charge Man and Ground Man. Either way, it is a little bit funky. Star Force 3 is the best out of both series, in your opinion. That is interesting. I don't hear a lot of people talk about, well, the Star Force series much at all, actually. Gotcha, so there's some stuff going on here. I've, I've been talking about the chat and not paying a ton of attention to the game, sorry. So... Yeah, okay, uh... Rikiko is being referred to as Miss Asakura in this game, so... There isn't the issue of Rika and Rikiko in the same game that I remember being an issue, but, uh, yeah. Alright, so let's go and find out what is the deal with what this ROM Navi may have implanted on us, or duct taped to us in its death throes. What you got, Chief? Uh, I didn't want to be the one to say that, Shanghai, so... Don't even. Nothing wrong, gotcha. Oh yeah, this is the, uh, the... The dot tarball, or whatever it is. Tar dot GZ that we found. Oh, that sounds pretty neat. Yeah, he developed this decades ago, which would make him fairly old. <laughs> yeah, Alice is still basically Lan. <laughs> so, Dr. Morichika is basically very much the same character as Dr. Hikari in the main in the regular Battle Network series in a lot of ways except he's not our dad he's the other kid's dad go talk to these nerds again Oh, okay, so it's... It's the creators shipping of characters! Gotcha. Oh no, we don't have our... So, technically, we couldn't have gone on the train earlier, despite the game telling us. 
All right, Campus Square over in the city area. Okay, so our closest jack-in point is still going to be home, but we can we can pop into a couple of things around here before we leave and see if we can find ourselves some uh, some nice little items here, some stuff we don't have. That purple thing is not something we're going to be able to get until we get an unlocker, and by unlocker I mean it's a crack tool in this game. And we're just going to get standard, uh, standard these things. It's pretty easy to dodge between these crosshairs. Or even sometimes to screw up like that, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Oh, nice. Again, I'm going to have to check that out at some point once I, uh... Once I get to the Star Force series. Alright, sub chip vendor. Fire. Yeah, we've seen that already. Open port. This is a new sub chip for this game that increases our encounter rate for a little while. For 50 Zenny, that's kind of useful if you're trying to track down a boss. On the other hand, that guy doesn't sell crack tools to get the purple mystery data in this room. So, he's just kind of a butt. Can't use the card reader. Can't go in the multi-purpose room. Can we go in here? No. And we can only jack in during class. Can we jack into the desk? Not yet. Yes, absolutely. If you put on an open port and the lock enemy, which is called uh, virus scan in this game. I actually said it earlier and I forgot. That's amazing. That is a great way to track down, well, really any fight that you want to do a lot. However, the odds of us running away from any battles in this playthrough are pretty low. So we may not need to do that except for bosses. And can we jack in here? Yes, this one isn't locked, so we can sneak in here. My dog can make some noise in the background. My other dog can make some noise in the background. I don't know if anybody can hear those dogs, but yeah, I got two dogs. Actually, I've got three dogs, but only two of them are all that noisy. And we got us a Tailwind chip. This will pull enemies in. This is basically the equivalent of the fan chip, but it's on a timer and does not set an object. So, pretty handy. We're gonna end up using this enough that I'm actually gonna pick it up right now and stick it in our folder. So, panel shot, get the hell out of here. There's not much going on there. There's not much... Can't really jack in anywhere in here. Is there anything that we missed in this room? I don't think so, because that blackboard is locked. Now let's go downstairs. Scan the general area again. I right, can't go in here. Yeah, so there's nothing else for us to do at the moment, but... Still, that was something at least. Hey, what's going on? Somebody yelling at us. Um, what in the hell is the tank doing? <laughs> yeah, it's made of metal as opposed to Rika's, which are like wood or paper mache or something. I don't remember what it's said in there. A virus got into the control. Why are you driving a tank around in a small town? Yeah, Shanghai wait to say anything like that until later and we get us basically a whole family of viruses here the fight so I'm gonna do this I believe and yeah you can see if the ray cannon EX goes fast as hell 
And there wasn't really necessarily a need to do that, but... I do prefer going for double deletes where possible. I don't think... I don't think we get any rewards from this fight. Because of facing a level 3 enemy at the very beginning of the game. That would probably be considered a little bit busted. Yeah, no uh, no item reward from that enemy. If we manage to get the, the level 3 ray gun, that would be a little bit ridiculous, probably. Oh, hey, look, you look exactly like our teacher because there's two characters based on the same character here. Oh, okay, I got you. You were, uh... Ooh, okay. Rich adventurer, you say? Bunch of prize money? It's... Hmm. That's a strange... thing. That's... That's quite a, uh... That's quite a reward to just listen to some kid and decide your business future based on that. But, to be fair... A battle chip shop in this town would probably be useful. It would help foster a community of decent battlers. Maybe we wouldn't get... Maybe they wouldn't get hammered by viruses, you know? I would figure that a small town would not necessarily have the world's, you know, not world-class internet security. Oh wait, it's Battle Network. Internet security doesn't exist anyway. Ha 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 ha! And she just goes back into the tank and backs away. Fired from embezzling my Oh boy. It's uh Ooh. This is getting a little bit weird for a lot of reasons. I would think that she would have a reputation that might harm her business, but maybe that's just me. So not too far into the future, we will have access to a pretty solid selection of chips from that shop. But obviously we have to wait for it to open. Yeah, in, in Battle Network 3, where he just Matrix dodges a bunch of... A bunch of bullets from the, the drone tank. That is pretty ridiculous. You are 100% correct. So, I'm in this back area here in Shanghai's room. We can decorate this with various things and change the background if we wish. But that costs money, so it's something we'll be doing later on. And I thought there was another teleport here to a special room, but maybe that's not until we beat the game. No, I could swear we had access to it before that. Is it up here? Spare room. Um, this gets used for something else later. I don't think this is the room that I'm thinking of. Because there is a debug room that we can access at a point, and that will let us uh, deal with various content that, as far as I know, is all stuff that was not in the game when the game was originally uh, DMCA'd. But some of it is in the final game now, or final game, yeah, sure. Because it's ever truly going to end up being finished, right? Some of that content is in this version of the game in the actual plot, is what I was trying to say. But apparently I just did not remember how words work, so... Yeah. Bit of an issue in this... in this world. Of words just suddenly acquiring no meaning whatsoever.
Out of here. Okay, yeah, I've explained countering before. Excuse. So, we want to go over to the top left. As that is going to be where we can go fight the, uh... Oh, wow, how about that counter timing? That was pretty good. Unfortunately, we only got an A rank because I was a little too slow. But we do get a bug fragment out of it, which is nice. We want to go to the top left of the map in order to get out of here in order to get towards the city area. And here we are. This is what the city area looks like. It takes the city at night. It does kind of look like it. We're too young for that bullshit. Come on. And we got a float barrier. W code kind of sucks, but the float barrier has a lot more health than the regular barrier, I think. And that's its main upside. Oh, I could have done that smarter. Unfortunately, when have I ever... Um... It, are, are you okay, buddy? Yeah, no, this enemy's graphic just glitched out kind of hilariously. I... <laughs> For some reason, the Kadama's uh, little sprite there was a little too high up. After getting sucked forward in the middle of a move, I believe. Yep, here we go. Earth is weak to Aqua and Leaf, but is strong against Heat and Elec. Can't be turned heavy or become stuck in sand. So aside from that field note, it basically is exactly what you would expect out of a ground type in Pokemans. Except this isn't Pokemans, it's... It's not Pokemans. <laughs> yes! That float barrier, generates a floating barrier. Yes, I think that this works, that it's like a barrier with more health, but... That's about it. In fact, I will give it a shot. I'm actually gonna throw it in here, because... I don't think I've ever used it. We'll see what it does, and then we'll probably take it out. Break Shot is very similar to the Poison Shot that we have, but it breaks, it cracks panels instead of uh, causing poison, and it does more damage, and it's Fire Element. So we got the thing in the first, in our first turn, but we should probably reduce the amount of enemies on this field real quick. So the, the Bibby Bat, you saw that, it shoots the, the gravity well thing that tracks very slowly. If we got hit by that, we would become heavy, causing us to crack panels for a little while. The Reftile is just don't hit it while it has its shield up. And this last enemy is called a Flame Meow, and it's a cat that shoots fire blasts. Okay, so this floating barrier appears to be just a 100 health barrier. So I don't know why they didn't just call it Barrier 100 like they're called in the regular Battle Network games. Also, again, we absolutely screwed up the Flaming Owl's attack pattern there a little bit. And Firearm 1. That's basically, I think it's 60 damage. 
60 damage, yeah. And it's basically just that flamethrower attack. 60 damage is alright for something that pierces like that. Okay, so this guy will sell us interior stuff for the room that we can decorate. That's not a big deal because we don't really have the money for that kind of thing right now. Money is a little bit hard to come by in this game. It is a minor issue. Tailwind. I was going to say, I think Fujin here is immune to that, but no. And it attacks in a very similar way to the Scroons that we saw earlier, but the shot bounces back. And we got a Storm Sea Chip out of it. That is a nice thing to have. It does a lot of damage, but on a very specific panel. It's tough to use, but incredibly powerful. And we get three Bug Fragments. So, I will never complain about that, because grinding counterattacks is a bit of a pain. Area 1 is upward, Area 3 is the bottom right. Okay. I was correct to diverge earlier. At the moment, I'm... Like, spending a lot of time just exploring here, trying to see what's, uh, what's in the area. Hey, that's rude. And that's me walking into a sand trap. So, the odds of me actually getting money out of this are greatly enhances the result, but also a little less so if I do that. Yeah, eight after taking rank eight after taking two hits, and we got a sandpit one chip. Those are among my favorites in this game, the sandpit chips. They create those little sand traps on the other side of the field, and if an enemy walks into them, they take a truckload of damage. It's generally a very good way to do a lot of damage because the enemies in this game tend to be pretty mobile. Alright, so we don't know whose cube that is. Telephone. Is it about my cube? Ah, uh, Mr. Burns and his cube. And we get a Gravity Ball 1 S-Code. Again, S-Code stuff is pretty nice. So I won't complain. Follow the purple path. Okay, so we're back to the colorblind design sucks thing, as I mentioned earlier. But, again, design for folks with colorblindness is something that is often very, very not good in video games, so I can't, like, come out here ranting too heavily, I guess, and especially with my not actually being colorblind. So, I'm going to line up the front real quick. And yeah, that's definitely not going to get us to an asterisk of one of those, but... Take a little bit. Oh, I get it. The The guy went down the dead-end road. But it's a, it's a loop, so... Yeah, there is something at the other end. It's just not very useful. Come on, man. You are lying. They're pretty adorable, huh? Alright, have a nice evening there, Karmic Name. And thank you all for anyone who stayed to watch. <laughs> it's very nice to... Yeah.
Get in and yep, nice and quick. Earthwave, S code. Again, we will never ever complain about S codes here. That's a nice 100 damage shockwave, although it's not necessarily super fast. M is a pretty good code too. I actually probably should like be using that Marissa and the other M code stuff. But I have not remembered to do so. What's going on over here? We've got. This is the port to the square, right? It looks like another area, which is why I'm slightly confused. Hooray! Another triple, another S. What do you got? Oh, yeah, it's because you're at a college campus. Hopefully, it does. Gotcha, that's related to a mechanic that I haven't really ever done anything with. Okay. 3,000. I don't have that kind. Actually, I do. I probably could. But I want to hold on to my 7k for a moment and see if there's something better. Because we do have another easy access point that we will, to this area that we will be getting later. And good for you. Alright, what's the deal? 2,000 for an HP memory, barrier, buster amp, hot storm. This is basically the same thing as storm, which is an eight hit tornado, two panels ahead, but it's fire element and five less damage per hit. So 120 versus the 160, uh, that's pretty useful in some encounters. Electric Chain 2, 70 damage, that is much more significant. L-Code, though, uh, I don't think that's very useful at this point. Step Sword R, step two, steps two ahead, and you slash the column. 130, this is basically unchanged from the Source game, aside from the, uh, aside from the graphics. I'm gonna grab an HP memory here. I should grab the cheaper ones first. We got a board back here. Battle chat board. This could possibly give us some inf useful information here. But we know about this. And yeah, there's a couple of references throughout these. By the way. Uh. Ranko Sissel referred to, uh... Wait, is that supposed to be Sumereko? Because... She's not actually in canon Ranko's sister as far as I know, but they have the same surname. It's very... Very strange, basically. And this person is going to tell us about program advances. If we put... In this case, with the ray guns, if we put them in order of code A, B, C, they will turn into... I think it's called High Cannon in this game, but it's usually called Giga Cannon in the regular uh, Mega Man games. So... That's a pretty powerful attack. It does a lot of damage, but it's one shot. However, it is a lot stronger than the three combined. Just don't miss. Signpost nobody's been maintaining. I'm sure that will be defaced at some point, won't it? I actually don't think I've ever checked. The Net Butler's office. What do you got? Um, request board. We can take side quest jobs here. Some of them will get us killed. Others won't. SP virus missions. These will get us killed by default now, but... If we take an SP virus mission and we go to a location where it spawns, it has a chance of appearing as a random encounter. And if you kill it, you come back to the board and you get a fuckload of money. However, they're all very, very hard. It's not even just like, oh, they do a lot of damage and they have a lot of HP. They have a lot of gimmicks to them usually too that make them hard to deal with at this juncture. 
So we will basically be ignoring these until we start getting a few other tools to deal with them. So, thanks, buddy. Alright, subchip vendor. Open port, full energy, firewall. Yeah, we've seen those before. Alright, and here's our virus missions. A couple of these are, like, multiple targets, too. Like, I think the... I think the Claunch one is multiple enemies, and it is easy to get overwhelmed. So we can take a look at some of these. Uh, ice Crystals. This one is pretty easy, so we're going to take this and we will complete this basically once we're over in the University area. Now where's the NPC we're supposed to be looking for? Because I have clearly not talked to everybody. Are you the... Oh no, you are sales person of Link Gates. You're a door salesman. Maybe money for the door repair. Oh. Out in the city area a while back. Gone for some time now. Oh boy. So now we gotta troll the area to go look for somebody who is no doubt about to get their ass handed to them. But hey, at least the NPCs will wait for us! That's nice, right? Alright, I have six MBs here, so I'm actually going to take Buster Amp, maybe? Yeah, I'll take Buster Amp, because that will be helpful. It's never bad to be able to do more damage. Talked to that person already, and we get some more of the more of the King Sandy butts here. Oh, that was not the correct placement for that, but yeah, because the other problem with using poison against these enemies is that they tend to remove all poison panels by overriding them with desert panels. So that was kind of silly. I was hoping to set up for a double and I didn't even do it right. Amazing. Speaking of amazing, this hand is really good. Oh, it walked out of my uh, shotgun blast there. That's a shame. You'll also notice that the Fujin is sucking up the sand panel. One thing that makes those tornado attacks really fucking powerful when you use them is that they will do extra damage on a lot of elemental attack on a lot of elemental panels, including sand and. Also, they will just destroy the sand panel in the process to prevent you from comboing off so easily, but you can do some hilarious things as a result. Tear through those real quick. Yes, another S code Earthwave. 200 Zennies. Well, I don't need to find the square just now.
And if you can stay up there, there we go. You even saw a little frame there that the cold air was taking on the, the sand effect. So that's pretty potent. Take advantage of the field wherever possible. If you get any sort of anything there, just use it as some form of boon. Or telling us about the main streets. Ooh, this will be a good opportunity for us to probably not actually get any more chips. But I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate adding here. When you select add, you discard all chips that you select. And then the next turn, you not only draw back as many as you had, but you increase the number of slots in your hand, as it were. So once we hit R here, we're going to have nine chips available to us. This is pretty powerful. In a fight that's not going to be over in like two seconds, this is a gu This is a great way to... It's a good way to set up your combos. Yes, we've heard that before. Talking about motorbikes. I'm not 100% sure where this doofus is, but we're trying to trying to figure that out. And we get ourselves oh nice. Venom shot in asterisk. And yeah, Alice doesn't even know what section of this area to look in. I just did that to be sure that I was not in the wrong zone. Just in case I failed to read something. So over here is City Area 3. Maybe... Maybe this nerd got lost. Alright, so we're fighting Lancers here. <laughs> it's a pun. And they are the equivalent of the swordy enemies in the original game. And they attempt to stab us with their little pokey sticks. And after a while, they will start area grabbing columns, which makes them kind of a pain in the butt. And they drop a lance chip, which is basically a, a long sword. It's stabbed two panels ahead. Or in the middle goes the Border Concerns headquarters. Nobody knows how to get over there. Well, I know how to get over there because I've played this game, but also Border Concern. That's a, an interesting uh, game. And that is explaining the Biospray chips, which we have not seen the enemies for yet, or seen the chips at all either. That they are basically very similar to the Gundel Soul items in the original Battle Network games. And wow, that was fortuitous. That was absolutely amazing. I can't believe that that happened. So we will be looking forward to those, I suppose. They can do a pretty good amount of damage, but the problem really is that you're locked in place and you have to hold down the button. And you may have to cut and run sometimes because you're about to get hit by a big attack. And you can lose a lot of the chip's effectiveness. And that's never fun. This fight sucks, but we'll... We'll take it. Not gonna complain about stuff that's still basically free. It doesn't suck because we're gonna get hit very easily or something, but rather because it's hard to uh, just clear it out in one one attack. We want our high busting levels if possible. Although it would be a good idea sometimes maybe to flounder a bit to try and get some money. Poison is sterilized by heat and electrolyzed by electricity. Pollutes water and kills grass. There we go. That's... is our explanation of poison. It, uh... Being poison element is also pretty good because you are immune to the effects of poison panels. You can walk on them as much as you want. 
and take no damage. And here's the here's the magma shot enemies, or was it break shot? It was something like that. But yeah, it's just the same thing as the poison lily, but upgraded. And yes, the name is absolutely a reference to Fantasy Star Online. And by reference, I mean considering the design, it's just an exact, exact copy of a monster from Fantasy Star Online. The original, I don't know anything about PSO2. I never did get around to uh, messing around with that. Even after they finally released it on Steam instead of the Xbox thing that... Well, Microsoft and Xbox are basically the same brand, but... Eh, we're not going to try to run. Never mind. I thought about it for a second, but no, 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 no. I said we're going to avoid running from fights. Even if that makes the stream a little overlong. You know, who's going to... Hard to complain about resources. Take the one that's faster here. Because thankfully there's no case where poison will like heal poison enemies or anything. And we got a bug fragment out of it, so that turned out to be the smarter choice. As you've probably noticed, those bombs take forever to reach their destination. And we got an Aura Sword. That is a pretty nice chip that shoots out a column-wide shockwave. And if we have an aura of any kind, including even just the humble barrier, it pierces through enemies. Yes, yes, we, we have talked to you. I'm getting more than a little bit lost at the moment, so please pardon that. This is kind of sad, almost. Almost. The hell am I talking about? It's definitely kind of excruciatingly unfortunate. I should know better. I know how to play a video game, I swear. Microsoft Store, that's what it was called. Yeah. I remember that it was an absolute travesty uh, PSO2 when it came out in English, just because of that. And uh, have a nice lurk. Meanwhile, we got this Lance L. That is a very nice thing to have, because if I recall correctly... The PA for these is the same in this game as it is in the source material. In that if we do knife, sword, lance, which is the equivalent of sword, wide sword, long sword. That should give us a PA. That is a nice, big, bladed weapon that does a ton of damage. So we will see if that pans out. If I actually draw all of those. That's a big if, but it's a big if that I'm willing to find out about. Also, yeah, we got a counter on that enemy. Kind of a shock that we managed to pull that off. Don't don't expect that to be a thing because they are not easily predicted. I probably should have attacked with regular attacks there. We got an error fragment. Is the guy not here? Back in City Area 1, probably? I legitimately do not remember where the NPC I had to talk to is. Which is pretty unfortunate because, yeah. Okay, so the Reftile is going to move around a little bit. Let's go ahead and let's add four. I would like to double check that that PA is in fact the same here. Take the damage from the Fire Blast. Make sure, and... Wow, the game really doesn't want to give us this, does it? You'll also notice that the enemy floats. Oh, I took our barrier. Whoops. I was too busy talking, not 
I'm busy thinking. All right, there we go. Knife, sword, lance, mega halberd. Or just L M halberd, as the case may be. If I recall correctly, there is a larger space in names for this game for program advances compared to uh, for regular chips. And yeah, look at that. Nice 2 by 3 Hits like a truck. M. Halbert is pretty nice. That is the equivalent of the Life Swords in the regular Battle Network game, or Dream Sword, as they were originally called in the original translation. And by original translation, I mean original language. It's not technically a translation in that case. I'm just dumb. I have no idea why the word dream was changed to the word life in any of the uh, localizations of Battle Network content, but for some reason, they just did that. The the dream virus was the final boss in the first game in Japanese, and then it became the life virus in English for some reason. Is there something wrong with dreams? I don't know. I do not have any idea. You just, uh, just say that. Oh yeah, that's a hidden path, but we can't actually get in there. And yes, summarily they changed the Dream Sword into the Life Sword. And again, not 100% sure what the deal with that was, and I doubled, I mashed A a little too fast there. And just completely wasted my sword. And my full synchro. Amazing, classic, we still get a triple. Okay, I really feel like I've searched this entire area, so... Is it further up area one? Must be, right? Lance is nice, we get to see that, that punch animation. Which we might not see at any other point in this game because, yeah. I don't tend to use that many super short range attacks. Yeah, yeah, we know it's dead end. Maybe the guy's over there. I don't think I explored the dead end last time. For some reason. And there's me mashing the button too hard again. Whoops. However, easy. And we're getting a lot of those storm chips in C, which is all right. We get, we get Cerno last time. I'm actually gonna go ahead and, yeah, we got, we got Cerno. So we have a, we have a, a basis basically for using C code. A core in a sense by being able to center our build around a big attack like that. So, that's nice. It's a slightly less terrible code than I thought. And by slightly less, I mean I figured it was okay. Oops. Well, yeah, now we can see uh, what the deal is with being affected by heavy. And that only seems to last for just a moment. I feel like it lasts longer than that. But maybe it was because we landed in, in the sand. And we were definitely stuck for a moment there. Over this way. That's a different warp. Yeah, this area is partially teleport maze. There we go. There's the goofus in question. I mean, aren't you all students? You can just go down one by one, maybe? Oh no, I guess they're from A and area then. Oh no, three generic navvies. You get a couple of 
a couple of goofuses on our side here. So we just have to fight the one. Well, that's fine. Yes, if an enemy gets hit by your attempt at an area grab, they take 10 damage instead. It does not eat up your, uh... It doesn't eat up your area grab, uh, area grab. It doesn't eat up your full synchro either, if that's a thing that you are ready to deploy. Easy, and that's even with taking a lance to the face that did 80 damage to us. All right, so let's let's round things off, and by that I mean take a single step and get into an encounter. Classic RPG of any variety whatsoever. All right, get up close. There we go. That up is a little extra cash for you. Oh, okay. Man, this is somebody warning us. Hey, you don't always know who owns these password cubes. Yes, we noticed. Hey, I wanted to check my money. I'm at 8300 8, I can go and... I'll buy the... No, I'm going to save my money on that link. I'm going to actually... Wait to grab this one. Because, although it's probably better to get places that take you deeper into the internet earlier, there's a very easy overworld access point to this, so I would prefer to have the I would prefer to have the Genso Square one. Because that we do not have such a thing for. This way. I suppose I probably should have distributed that damage a little better, but eh. It's fine. We can take a couple of hits and these enemies here are still chumps. Nice! It stayed in a position where I got an easy hit. Thank goodness. Are you the one? Yes. Alright. And we got ourselves a Metro Pass. So we can go take the train. But first... Excuse me. But first, we're jacking back in. Two over here. Yep. You've heard about that. And yes, of course, by the way, when you jack in and out, green mystery data refreshes. So make sure to come around and pick it up. You can usually get stuff... You can occasionally get stuff like that. But there are some that are so bad about randomization that I could swear that they are completely fixed. Hey, I'll take a free bug fragment, buddy. Oh, no, error fragment from that enemy. Right. I think they count as electric element, even though their attacks do uh, null element damage.
I know that there's a way to pick up a ray gun in Asterisk. And that person explained to us about Navigos, which is a mechanic that I will demonstrate in a moment. All right, let's talk to this program. Right, get a uh, one of those. Let's grab some HP memories. And yeah, our money just fucking disappeared. But we have more health, which is never to be complained about. Well, occasionally, if the cost is that high, we can just be like, wow, that's a huge rip. What a royal rip. But... Still, it's not a bad thing. Let's see, uh, second one. That's all right. That's decent. Barrier in B is kind of worthless because we have an asterisk bar barrier already. What do you got? Things with ghost like navvies that suddenly attack passersby. Right, right, right. And there's nothing we can really. <coughs> oh, jeez, I should get a glass of water. There's nothing really to worry about in the shop here. Pick up this mystery data for a Lance L. Wow, that's that's pretty nice. I didn't know that you could get those from Mystery Datas in this area. Also, that mole tanked that cannon shot for the enemy up there. That's unfortunate. That's a highly irritating thing for that mole to do. Ooh, we got a C code ray gun. So we're going to put that in... Do a quick sort here. Lance, we have one knife. Three sword. Two sword, two lance now, and sort by ID. Oh, we had another one of those. Okay. All right, so let's do that. Let's save. Because if I recall correctly, right here is where we fight Cerno version two. This is our first encounter with a Navi Ghost, and we can see that she has 900 HP. Compared to the 500 she had before, she is shockingly tanky for this moment of the game. You can easily run into her, like, just out of nowhere. And these grenades are really not going to make it in terms of... Oh! Oh, that was gigantic. So... It's 280. We're gonna do that. We're gonna... We're gonna take the absolute crap ton of damage that that deals. And yes, in addition to the fact that her overall attack patterns are a lot different, her... Her, uh, floor ice towers are a little... more regular. When she does her, uh... her targeted slam thing there, it drops icicles on the field. Which is pretty irritating to give you more to dodge. Uh, I was going to say it'll be fine to just take a little bit of poison damage. Because that doesn't have any effect on your rank, which, granted, doesn't really matter here because our rank is unimportant. And let's go ahead and just add those. So yes, this fight, although it's not super hard, this is a hell of a lot harder than anything you'd be facing at this point in a regular Battle Network game. Like, yeah, there's a thing where you can easily fight base early on, but that's about it. And that's, you know, kind of minimal, really. So, set this up. Alright, so we're trying to approach this safely, and I fucked that up. Okay. 
Good work, me. However, this is going to be a kill shot. We have enough area to guarantee that that hits. We took a ton of damage out of that. We got a busting rank of only four, which is the lowest we've seen in this run so far, but we always get the Cerno V2 chip. However, as a consequence of this, the defeated Navi's remains flew away. Yes, we will fight Cerno on the overworld, and by the overworld, I mean this area, occasionally, just randomly, where she hits even harder, and I think she has 1300 HP. So, that's a very easy way to die. But also, we got a pretty nice weapon out of it, so... When I remember to redo my folder... You know, that's a pretty nice core of big hits that we can throw in there. Alright, so you're the kid that... Yeah, for the job request from much earlier. On the back of a cold computer. Something nice for just going to the back of the freezer again. Okay. I will do that in a bit. Alright, let's go find Dr. Morchika's lab. And here's an Ionic Breeze. Here's a vending machine. We can check into this one, which there's a lot of them in the game that you cannot. Like, usually you're able to jack into most vending machines in a Mega Man Battle Network game. In this one, not so much. Gito repellent? That doesn't sound very cool. At this point, anyway. And there's a purple thing over there that we can't deal with, and bronzers. These enemies are going to limit our movement. But also, they're armored, so we can't do damage to them until they open their mouths. And I fuck up a ray gun shot. Don't stand in the don't stand in the hilarious MS paint fire, otherwise you take damage. And then it just goes away after one touch. But still damage. Come on. Both of them should sync up. Oh, damn it. Not quite. I thought I had something there for a second. And they dropped the bronze napalm chip, which throws three ahead and basically does that, I think. The same thing that their attack does? Maybe not. Maybe it is, like, just a, a cannonball. You can tell that I didn't ever use them. Yeah, see, this is what I was saying why I'm not too uh, broken up about getting a link to Campus Square, because... Yeah, we can get there easily. Here we go. Hey, you. Oh boy, I bet we're gonna be in the middle of an event in a second here. Gar Yakimo of, of the company Border Concern. We just heard them mentioned earlier, so I don't think this sounds particularly great. Father Vlad. Yeah, I'm sure you actually have a father. Again, sort of referencing the meme in the story where she pretends that she's the offspring of or related to Vlad the Impaler, but is not. He's just some anonymous gremlin.
Hmm, gotcha. The add-on manager. Ooh, this is a nice thing to get. This is very similar to the Navi customizer that you get in regular Battle Network games, but honestly kind of more powerful. I mean, I've used the Navi customizer and that's a load of shit. Yay, we got some add-ons. We get Buster Power, Buster Rapid, Custom Plus, and we got an extra folder. That is the one that's... Yeah, that's not going to be a uh, customizable slot, too. So we pop open the menu. Uh, first of all, this extra folder... Uh, I'm hitting L and R to scroll up and down the list, list of chips in here, by the way. This extra folder is unimpressive. Its contents, its most interesting thing is to area grab L's, and we can't edit it. We can only equip it. Extra folders are a concept that cropped up really starting in Battle Network 3, where they were uh, pre-built folders that are usually used for challenges and stuff. Go into Navi and check out our add-on manager here. We have some tutorial. And I will explain this in words in a second after you, well, get explained it in words. I feel like calling it CPU is not necessarily appropriate because you can't just add stuff onto a CPU yourself. Which we'll find things later on that will increase our amount of uh, stats we can fill in for this. And yeah, we're, we're limited, of course. The add-ons with color names, you cannot install two with the same color. However, those two that are buster stats are non-color. They are just gray, basically. Gray is a color. Come on, buddy. And yeah, nice and simple. Breaks the rules. It shouldn't let us, but I don't think I've ever really tried. Unlike in other games where the Navi customizer's rules can be broken and will cause bugs. And in fact, in Battle Network 3, you have to do that to unlock something. And yeah, once, you, once you've made all your selections, you hit start and that will save it. Otherwise, it won't save. So naturally, they give us stuff that we can all equip, and this will give us one extra chip during our custom screen, increase the power of our buster by one, and let us shoot a little faster. And running makes a hell of a noise and does not kick us out immediately, so we have to hit B to exit. And, yeah, we can hit select, view around, stuff like this. There's no reason to hit L and R, because those won't scroll the, scroll the list if it's only three or less. And, yeah. Alright, so let's ask him about our dot cab again real quick. So we just go and talk to everybody. There's not a lot of the talk to all NPCs situations in this game compared to BN, uh, well, any Battle Network game, really. Rika's interested in the heavier machinery, because of course she is. Here's Border Concerns Net Battle Machine, which lets us project battles out there like we're having a Yu-Gi-Oh card battle. Basically, it's basically the Kaiba Corp projection things. Of course we can jack in, otherwise we wouldn't be able to use it.
I mean, I think if you can view it from a monitor whatsoever, it would not be hard to connect that to a projector. But again, what do I know? I mean, we didn't have a proper fight. That doesn't count. Alright, so let's go ahead and have us a quick battle here. I mean, these two nerds. Sakuya likes to think that she's, like, basically Dr. Entropy, but we're, we're gonna pretty much demolish this fight. She moves fast occasionally, but... Well, it helps if I don't walk into the daggers, but... You can see that there's not that much going on with this if I was just playing better. And 40 a hit is kind of unimpressive considering that dude punched us earlier for... a hundred. So let's add the two grenades. All right, can we get a... Damn, the... this really doesn't want to give me my program advances worth anything here. Right, hit it. Damn. Oh, she tries to stab us in the back. That's something. Poison should make things a little easier for us. A little. Unfortunately, again, I'm getting absolutely jack shit here in terms of draws. I could end this if I had the Mega Halberd, but I don't. And yes, that is what the High Cannon looks like. It is... Like... It extends three forward and hits the two rows two e on each side. We fucked that fight up pretty badly, but... Again, we were relying on big hits and we were just not drawing them. Wow, Shanghai, you're a complete asshole. A little, you think? Oh, time to time to go find the kid. And yes, if you hit L while you're on a mission, you can actually get some information back about your your, uh, your, your job board mission. It's pretty nice. Um, so, is she just going to be locked in here overnight? Does she not have parents? Well, okay, uh, actually, come to think of it, apparently only Alice has any parents whatsoever, so... That's a little weird. What do you need? Government office trying to get a license open. Gotcha. Small, lightweight navy. This is a concept that's unusual. For the series. However, let's go get those ice crystals real quick. Let's jump into this freezer. Go fight some easy enemies. Possibly get to the back, get... A, uh... Get an item, so that way we can take it back to the university. When we go over there again. And yeah, I do mean easy enemies, because at this point, wow. 
The bubble blaster chips, by the way, are really strong because they're multi-hit attacks. They shoot five shots. So if you stack a bunch of attack boosts on them, they can demolish enemies. That might be a thing that I end up doing at some point. By that, I mean I probably absolutely will, because multi-hit attacks in this game, as in most Battle Network games, can be pretty ridiculous. There's really not much going on here in terms of anything that we miss, I don't think, so if we just get to the back, and we pick that up, get the Ice Crystal data. I'm going to do one last double check over on the left side to make sure that I didn't miss anything too big. Alright, yeah, there's a couple of things that we missed here. Ghost Body Asterisk, that is absolutely huge. This is the invisible chip from the regular Battle Network games. This basically makes us completely immune to damage, except for a very few attacks for a short period of time. It is very, very good. And yeah, we are not going to have enough to set that as a regular chip for a while. But that is something that will really help enable us to do uh, to do the to do the spe the SP virus fights and get money that way. So that I forgot that that was in here. That's that's really amazing. And this as well, Magi Bomb. It is in a terrible code. I don't know what it does other than damage, but I guess it has to do something extra. But we got what we need. Alright, so... We gotta go find our teacher again and go ask her about... a tiny Navi. And figure out where exactly our instructor is, because she's not in 2-2. Not in here, maybe in the PC room. Possibly somewhere else in town, who knows. Oh, here she is. Now it's not the best time, you say? What's going on here? Can't fight, gotcha. All right, light enough to send by email. All right, so let's deal with this. We got more uh, more story encounters. I think I think these fights might actually give us rewards though, which is something that's a little flighty with it. And that was the part where I have to be a little bit annoyed because, like, this is usually one of my favorite characters in the series, but they. Reduced her almost entirely to memes in this game, and, like, she is not useful dialogue-wise. Which just is really sad, because usually she's genuinely, A, kind of funny in a smart aleck way, and B, like, really smart and can be shockingly capable. As a fight, she would be really tough to negotiate, but... You know, maybe the maybe the developers just did not like the character. So, what can you do? Apparently, bitch about it on the internet to people who may or may not know anything about what I'm talking about in the first place. Anyway, easy fight, easy fight. 
We get a couple more though. This is an endurance fight and it's basically all shit that we've seen already. However, there's no editing in streams, so I have to show you this. Seriously, they didn't even get to attack. Oh, that's a little unfortunate. Because you see the gun hopper managed to dodge my grenade. That's a big reason why the grenades suck ass, by the way, is that they are so easy for the enemy to avoid. I would generally prefer to use something else at some point. But I gotta actually get around it. Can you believe that? This motherfucker over here just dodging all of these attacks and ruining quite a few of them. So I guess we'll take the hit that we almost have to at this point. And just set poison and let the fight end itself. There we go. Alright, on to fight four. Yeah, so this is going to be a set of five, I'm pretty sure. Which is pretty heavy of a number of battles here, but okay. Alright, so we've got some new enemies here. We've got the Liberator, who drops a uh, little targeting crosshairs that you don't want to stand in. Obviously. And the Whole Snake, which is that snake enemy that was mentioned earlier that will uh, use Biospray attacks on you. We'll give you access to them if you beat them. So, yes, obviously I was wrong, by the way, about these fights giving you rewards. Which I guess means we can fuck up as much as we want. Alright, so... do that and six point nine megs referencing again the Moo Q thing over and over again that easily translates through a uh, what's it called Goro Awase where it's the numbers equal a, a phrase or or word. Basically it's the thing that is going on with all of the jersey numbers in Pokemon Sword and Shield where they all translate to a word that is themed around the user's type. All right, so. All right, nice and simple. We can basically end the day if we want to, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go complete that job real quick by heading over to the university and giving the kids some money or the ice crystal data rather we got a heavy anchor 2 chip this is some pretty solid hardware for this point in the game 150 damage but it is slow to hit it's worse than the grenades and it targets, it does damage to a column maybe at best, so that's a very easy attack to miss with. We will probably not be fucking with that thing. Oh yeah, they've, they're closed for the day. We can't go in and take shortcuts to the square. But, we can go back home. And yeah, there's nothing else to do uh, plot-wise for this segment. So let's do this. Save and proceed.
And we get no animation for this whatsoever, because I guess the room is that dark with no lights on. Well, to be fair. I don't know, putting pressure on people like that is a bad idea. Uh oh. Where's these clothes? There, yeah. Hmm. Alright. And we got an email. What's the deal? Alright, so that's from the beginning of the game that I completely forgot to look at. And this tells us the rules about the chips, uh, what chips we can use. And yeah, here's the thing that I explained already. Only five Navi chips of any kind are allowed. And yeah, that's pretty easy to remember. That's a pretty standard rule. Busy until the grand opening, so we can't... We can't go negotiate with that just yet, unfortunately, and it has not changed physically whatsoever. So let's go ahead and let's swing by here and find out what is wrong. Oh no, it's purple. Our controls are going to be reversed. Oh no, it's just poison gas. Oh no, it's just really dirty air. Oh no, it's just making us ill. Oh no, we just have to jack into the Ionic Breeze or something. Like, that should be pretty obvious. So let's get ourselves started on this. This dungeon, which is pretty annoying. This dungeon, right down to the music, is incredibly similar in a lot of ways to Battle Network 2's first dungeon. Again, purple smoke, uh, air-themed computer. Yes, if we touch the purple gas clouds, we take damage and we get teleported over to an area like this. I don't know what you're talking about, this won't get annoying fast. And I also have no idea what you're talking about, about this area having massive fucking checkpoint starvation. Timing. Well, I'm fucked then. Okay, yeah, getting in there is gonna be a bit of a task. Ow. That was stupid. I walked into the cannon shot. And yeah, that's what the whole snakes using their biospray attack looks like. Oh, we got, an, got a free HP memory. And there's another item over there. Alright, gel packs. These enemies basically inherited a lot of the attributes of the Mets from the previous game. In that... They are defended usually, and when you, and when they prepare to attack, they uh, they do that for you. When you get in line with them, although when they attack, they prop their their thing up and it shoots its beam out. They give the Hakero chips, which are pretty strong, and they're electric element, which means that it's going to be pretty handy during the next fight. I should change my folder before then, but we will do that when we get there. However, adding this is a lot. A lot quicker to do. Sort by cores. And there we go. All of our buster stats are now two. Which hopefully means that our little sidearm there is going to be a lot easier to use. And we've got a Dun Beetle here. Not to be confused with, well, you know what it's not to be confused with. A lot of things. It has an aura usually, but only for like 10 damage. And then once you get rid of that, 
it switches over to a barrier that pops up occasionally, which is, again, a single hit uh, thing that you just remove very readily. These are indeed the enemies that will give us those Aura Sword chips that I mentioned. You can tell by the fact that they are having a bit of issue doing ranged combat with their their shield down. And in B code, which is usually pretty good for swords, but in this game, the codes are a lot different, owing very heavily to the differing names of the navvies. So it's not so it's not so big of a deal here. Needless to say. Wait for this cloud to pass by. Oh, it's double. Stay between them. You can see those are zipping around pretty fast. Come over here. And we get a quick fight. These are... This is pretty easy. Yeah, like, the, the pit snake looks dangerous and all, but nada. Especially not with a setup like that, where we can just completely eliminate it right off of the bat. And these clowns just decide not to even bother with decent strategy here. Punch! There we go. Okay, so we don't jack out immediately. I don't remember if this clears the purple clouds here or not. Because we've definitely missed some shit in this area. And I would prefer to do as little missing stuff as possible. Should be remembering to choose more chips to... Again, manipulate a mechanic that we haven't dealt with yet. Okay, so with the clouds gone, we can go and freely pick up the items that we missed, which are a non-zero quantity, as far as I can tell. Get out of here, nerd. Take your 150 zenny. That's an acceptable prize. Okay, I think we got everything then. Yeah. We got everything, so let's jack out. And the elevator is functional. Let's go to the second floor. And we're going to be having some gas in here in a second. Yeah. There's, there's a good doctor who is unconcho. And... Doors are locked. And we gotta cover the... We gotta cover the thing that can kill us, I guess. Despite the fact that Marissa uses electric attacks, she'd be much better for this fight, but... You know. Aw, oh, you're adorable. And useless. You are going to inform me the rescue program. Okay. Right, so we gotta do this, and... There we go, that's our first time getting hit. The fade out happens a little fast and Alice gives us the most useless advice possible. Dodging around in this area is very hard because these patterns are weird as hell. Ew, three bronzers. I don't want to fight this. But I'll... I'll do it, I guess. Right. Let's see, can we get another one to open, please? And we did... Oh, fuck's sakes. 
Also, I do like that there are multiple lines for for Shanghai getting gassed. That is some good attention to detail. Let's just try and complete the uh, poison gas thing here before we start farting around with trying to get the items. I gotta approach this smarter, not harder. And for that uh, little double kill there, we get the reverse shield chip and a bug fragment because we got that from the reptile, I think. And I went in kind of a useless position after saying, hey, yeah, let's worry about clearing the dungeon before we worry about getting the items. That was poorly planned because I forgot that the whole snakes do not get pulled. Also, when a poison attack goes over grass, it turns the field into poison. That's... That's a thing that was added for this game. And yes, it is a little bit on the gross side in terms of balancing. You are correct. They made poison very strong in this game. I guess somebody was upset about how bad poison was apparently in Pokemon, even though it's quite good of a type at this point. Alright, so... Here we've got a, a gas cloud that's just really been absolutely... Absolutely taking more than its fair share of caffeine pills. Sorry, I had to remember what the order was for attacks here in terms of optimization. And we got money out of that, which is fine. We have a, a crap ton of storms, if I recall correctly, and the reverse shield. I don't think I've ever actually used it. What's our storm count looking like here? Actually less than I thought. However, it's available in asterisk code, so I would prefer to have that. Gel packs. This is a formation I don't think I've ever seen before. Oh, and we can literally just let it time out if we want to? Okay. Effort. Control panel is right this way. And we are all the way back at the beginning of the level. Yes, this is what I was talking about, about checkpoint starvation. Because this area has it a little too much. This is definitely something that I think the designers should go back and fix at some point. Because, wow. That's some good counters. That's good squishy. Whoa. Biospray one in eye code. That's shockingly usable. Not right now, but eventually. Yikes. No need to run. We can literally, literally just stand here and let this end. This is times where I wish that S code sometimes gave chips instead of. Or Gave money instead of chips because we're getting a lot of those. So at this point, like, 
Yeah. Oh, fuck me. I forgot that that does that, because it looked like it was not doing that. Do we have, uh, we have three of those already. So we're not fully stocked on those yet, but still, that's pretty good. Again, though, we've been getting completely free battles for some of those. Like, sometimes the game is just like, yeah, I don't feel like making you have to make an effort. Freebie. Gotta tell you, I'm really glad for these interludes. Yes, this is this area where we have to hopefully not fuck up. And now is kind of not a good time to give me a battle game, but okay. Yikes. Alright. Yeah, it's pretty much normal at this point. We got a Dun Beetle, a Bill Beetle. Bill Beetle. I don't know what that name is supposed to be. Billion Beetle. But also, oh, I forgot about that. Oh wow, the, the Tailwind and later Headwind ships have the Northwind effect, so they just rip auras and barriers right off? That's kind of great. So we just trivialized that fight entirely. Uh, nice job, us. Alright, so... Sit here for a second until one opens his mouth. And we'll fuck that up terribly. Fuck that up terribly! I can't believe I missed that. I'm... <laughs> slightly insulted. Yeah, th those bronzers are kind of obnoxious. And we got a Cold Air 2B. Not hugely important. Alright, so we got a couple of stops on our quest to get to go save Romelia. And yeah, we can take a look at the stuff here. But the target is this flower pot. Alright, let's go! Two more areas of this to go. Yeah, they, they ramp things up a little quickly. We have to duck in here. We have to get into a fight. Unfortunately, the freebie fights against gel packs are gone. But we can still do some of this here. get a Venom Shot in U-Code, which is, eh. There is actually a Navi in U-Code, and it has some pretty powerful combos behind it, but Venom Shot is not going to be useful in that regard, because, first of all, it is much later in the game, and second of all, they don't work together. Like, at all.
Right, so this is just doomed to be a two-turner. This setup is not particularly great for reasons of dealing damage, and this game does not have copy damage in it, so yeah. Going around. And yeah, at this point I have like started deciding, hey, I'm gonna go get these items while I'm in here. Instead of being smart about it. Whoops. Hey, a bug fragment. I did not even notice that I got a counter there. Very nice. Alright, so this is a new safe area. Which is nice, considering the other area gave us absolutely nothing in terms of checkpoints, except for the one at the very beginning. And hey, a Biospray 1 in Asterisk. That is not helpful-ish. Well, it's a little helpful, but not a huge deal. Also, I like how we got that counter, by the way. That's pretty impressive. All right, walk into the poison and just time out. There we go. Amazing. Free money, free bug fragments. This is just a continuous continuum of gas clouds going in this rotation that we are going to duck into and out of at each point in the loop and of course we're gonna get into a fight in the middle of in the middle of our little run here in order to make me as confused as possible scram Hopefully I remembered that. Off to the side. We can deal with that in a moment when we're done with the area. This one doesn't go very far back. You gotta let these basically shake themselves out a little bit here, I think. We're gonna chip all of these down to 90, and there we go. Triple, Lance, an asterisk. That was stupid of me. I got away with it. But, we can go in here. We can do that. Get ourselves a quick save. Which is not really necessary to do, but let's go ahead and... Not have a fight for that enemy, so I got baited a little bit too. Not have a fight for that enemy, what the hell am I saying? 
Not have a fight at that uh, little set there. So, pull our enemies in here. And yes, you will see here that the poison lilies are unable to be pulled by wind moves. Very nicely done. And we get three bug fragments out of the deal. Let's go back this way. And go get that item we missed. Again, don't bother trying to run. I've decided to try and, like, actually not do that. But I still keep reflexively trying to go, hey, yeah, let me, let me skip this. No, no. We'll take the chips and everything. Hey, cold shot C. That is a nice thing to have for a C code folder that I keep forgetting to do anything with. Again, similar idea to Venom Shot, Break Shot, but it produces ice panels and does 110 damage, and we can only have two of them in a folder. So I guess it's okay that we only have the one. All right, jack out. Go to the elevator. Third floor. And let's do it. Yeah, I want to. I want to examine the. All right, let's do this. Don't mess with the kid. She's probably ninety-nine percent dead right now. That would just be rude to go poking her. Yeah. Strange Navi went to the back. Yeah, that will be medicine. So. In due time, we'll be uh, dealing with her. Take that 600 zenny, and let us keep going. Ooh, there's that one slow cloud in there that is, like, fucking everything up a little bit. But that shook itself out pretty easily. Okay. This next one looks really god-awful. This looks like a set of four in a nice tight configuration. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, needless to say, my throat is getting dry. I should have gotten up and gotten that glass of water, but we should be done with the stream in, like, 15 minutes. So, or we can just go get fucked. And we can just get fucked again. This area is, like, honestly, kind of the worst. However, dying to the trap seems to have put us on the other side of it, so at least there's that. Don't want to be fighting things in the middle of dodging. That is a constant issue with this game, by the way, is that you just, you get into fights when you're dodging shit, and it's incredibly obnoxious. Also, there's kind of a very small variety of enemies involved here. Well, involved everywhere, but here especially, it's like, oh, here's more bronzers. They're the most obnoxious thing ever because you have zero breaking attacks at this point. High float barrier, high 2000 zenny. <coughs> Excuse me. And also some whole snakes. They will never line up where you want them to. And it's just a complete pain in the butt. But we did get an asterisk code storm, so that's nice. Oh, I'm trying my best at least. Well. I'm actually going to reverse course because I'm feeling a little cowardly here. And you know what they say, cowardice is the better part of valor, and all that. A. 
Hey, that was stupid of me. A hitbox? Not the streaming website, but the concept? Does this game know what they are? And again? Like, it breezed four feet in front of my nose? Which, granted, would probably fuck you up if it was actual poison gas, but... Also, Jesus Christ, game. Game, just calm... Calm down. I... Uh, Again. Pardon me. Fuck off. Yeah, please be careful around that. Do you want to come in here and walk through this? So I'm gonna use a half energy to refill half of my energy. Bounce. That's right, I gotta wait for it to I gotta wait for it to bounce again and not get caught on the edge? Damn it! Motherfucker. Get out of here. Okay, that time I actually think that that was, like reasonable hitboxing, but it, that was not. These hitboxes are very, very weird. Ugh. Nice, that counted as a double. That is pretty impressive. Fuck you! I'm starting to get really angry because this is kind of awful. And by kind of, I mean, why would you do this? This is the second dungeon. At least save making the hit detection non-existent until you run out of ideas. I mean, come on. And this little asshole has the audacity to be like, Hey, yeah, I can do it. Are you sure about that? Are you sure I can fucking do it, motherfucker? Also, yes, you will notice that our default shots are pathetically slow, even with that buff. I don't know if that's a consequence of, like, the controller I'm using, or even just using a controller at all. But it's pretty sad, and is one thing that makes using regular shots kind of worthless without a certain upgrade. To a point where it really is, it's like, hey, even with no buffs, just use a charge attack. If you have to do damage and you run out of chips. Because, wow. And again, speaking of wow, getting through that the first time. Okay. Let this pass by. Let it pass by again. Don't! Damn! The timing on that is so tight! Again, I need to remind you all, second dungeon. Oh, 
I do appreciate that... The, I appreciate that they're, like, making the actual Battle Network gameplay tough. But this stuff, woo, Buddy! It's maybe a little too much. Right, B, C... I think... I'm gonna double check that it's just BCD, yeah, so... BC asterisk, that should give us... The, uh, the, the high cannon number two, or whatever it's called. And yes, the whole snake's poison gas pierces through barriers and auras and anything else of that nature. And of course, it's got to decide to be a jerk and not get into range. This thing is smart no matter what, I just don't... Uh... Fucking fight, I forgot where I was. And again, need I remind you that every time we fail at the one over there that is, like, closer than hell. No, we're not doing that. I'm really tempted, though. We're not gonna do it. Oh, good thing that the uh, ghost body timed out there. That was foolish of me. But thankfully, the bronzer just died of its own accord. Okay, so bounce. I gotta get in, like, right behind this thing. That's not really right behind it enough, but it's something. I'm gonna save here. Mother fucking god damn it! Slide slide along the goddamn edge, you idiot. Ugh! If I die, which I may actually just suicide in this next battle on purpose. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna die here and force a reload. Because I saved further up. That's what that's for, is so you can do things like this. So you can skip having to redo puzzles that you have already done because the designers forgot to put checkpoints in. And that is the great flaw of this game. Well, it's more of a mediocre one, but that joke isn't very good. That was, that was dumb. These grenades are useless against these enemies. I need something better. How many do I have in here? Do I have three and I can sub them out for the, the high cannon again? Or, I mean, God willing, I could probably do a third, uh, third mega halberd. But we've seen by this point in this game doesn't like me having good things. Also, nice job that the snake dodged immediately. I'm checking this bit. Uh, I have four dust bombs in here, so... Sort by ID. Uh, we can do another ray gun. We can, in fact, put in a set of these, and that was the wrong sword. And we can have three of that PA in here. 
And also, we're going to go ahead and put Marissa in here. Finally remembering to use a Navi chip. Save. Okay, it's a little easy. Uh, we should be able to sneak in and get this. Oh god, that's not worth it. Well, here we go. This is where the final boss is. Final boss. Final boss of the area is. After all of that, just obnoxiously doing the same puzzle over and over. At least the area is small, so if you get it right the first time, it's quick. But, here we are. Medicine, an autonomous navi, as we've mentioned before. And every time... Every time an auto autonomous navi shows up in these games, at least, well... At least once per game that one shows up, I guess. There basically has to be... The, the auto navy giving a speech of like, oh, well, you who have operators are just naturally weaker than us because you have to sit around, farting around, waiting for orders. And there has to be uh, you know, the conversation, basically. So medicine has attacks that create poison and create grass panels so she's sort of a mixed element navi who is basically using two elements that are weak to each other and it creates some odd setups needless to say okay let's just end this right now again kind of kind of just speeding through this fight a little bit but you know, I'm not here to do things the difficult way. After that dungeon, I want this to be nice and easy. And we get our Navi chip from beating her. <laughs> yeah, really? Oh no, fart gas. I mean, again, Shanghai is the sort of person who would just dodge by lunging forward and punching as hard as possible in some regards, so that isn't really a surrounded condition. Yeah, so... There you go. The, the lesson is that on some people, shame is the only thing that works. Remy doesn't like birds, we find out. I mean... It's okay, we would have had to have bailed out the doctor anyway and done all this, so... Nothing really changed. In terms of plot, anyway. Like, yeah, she learns a lesson and all, but that's it. Well. She escaped and somehow didn't die. Hello? Uh, say what? Is that a Fire Emblem? Why is there just a Fire Emblem character in this? That's pretty stone cold, I gotta admit. Yeah, that's... that's definitely... That's... Definitely, absolutely... Just a net navi who is designed after 
designed after Canis from Fire Emblem 7 in it, or just, just the Druid class in general. He's even called Druid Man. It's not an accident. This, th there literally is a Fire Emblem character in this game too. I, this game is so weird sometimes. Anyway, she's gonna die. That's kind of sad. Kind of fucked up. Yay, we gained Vermilia's peak Vermilia's P cube. So that P cube. P code rather, so we can get through her P code P cube. God I'm having an issue here. Shop's not open. Damn. Well, we can come in here. And we can start raiding things for, uh, for free items. Silver knife. That is the upgraded version of the regular knife. Here's his guard. That is interesting. I didn't know that. That's part of another program advance, though, so... We're not just going to replace our knives with that. Because there's a higher level of the Mega Halberd ability. And yes. Do things this way. set it up so that way the other gel pack will time out and this bronzer can just be shot in the face as soon as it opens its mouth. Hate those enemies but the silver knife would be a good way to deal with them. And you can see Romelia has a lot of stuff going on here. Again, rich as hell, so yeah. <laughs> what a big dork. Let's have a quick look at Romelia's PC because we can get some items in here probably and open that P cube on the other end. And yeah, you can see she's got kind of a, a bat slash vampire theme going on. We can buy wallpapers from certain areas if we wish. Hey, you. Oh. Oh, dang it, we can't open that. I'll have to buy crack tools at some point. Or just find them. You. And you. Open the cube, and those stay open permanently. We can probably fight version 2 of Sakuya right now, but that is not really on my list of things that I need to do. There are a crap load of optional fights in this game, by the way, so there's a lot of stuff we can do. Let's get a look at this cutscene, and then see if the shop is open, and that will round out our stream for that. Oh, that just... Is that Jace from Magic the Gathering? It's not. Yeah, see, I told you, it's Druid Man. The dark program from dark chips in circulation. Ooh. We still don't 100% know what the the enemy wants to do aside from destroy the world, basically. A couple days later. Shit. 
shop should be open pretty soon. Email. Alright, so... Let's, uh... Let's read over those from the... The plot, because they are actual emails. Alright, and Kamami has her ship open. Ship. <laughs> shop open, pardon me. Battle chips and add-ons. So that's nice. We got a lot of stuff we can get there. Yep, put three chips in the chip trader, and it will give us something new. So we'll we'll check that out in a moment. Hey, we got our second folder. Nice. That is tremendous. We talk to her directly to get add-ons, or we can go check out the various uh, cases to check out the chips in there. We got some interesting stuff here, a lot of HP up, ammo, big ammo, blue buster. These don't do anything except for change the appearance of your shots. This blitz buster is an interesting thing. Instead of a charge shot, we get a rapid fire attack whose total speed is based on all of our buster stats, including, I think, power. So, this is actually something we're going to end up using at a few points throughout the game, just to tear through certain enemies. But, we don't want to buy anything from there just yet. Support chips. Status effects. Bubble bath, this makes all enemies slippery, so they, like, freak out like they're on ice. Melt wax, melt all enemies. This does something that I don't 100% remember. Like, it cuts their damage in half, I think? Blind Leaf. Blind all enemies. This does exactly what you think it does. They can't see you. Gravity Field makes all enemies heavy. I discussed that before. Area Grab. It's an L code, unfortunately. Area Hold. This prevents your enemy from stealing one more row of your panels. Very situational. Float Barrier, Stun Game. We don't have enough to grab a second one of those, which is unfortunate, because that is what I would have loved to get. And now, if you excuse me a moment here, I am going to pull up the list of number trader codes that I got for myself from playing through the game. And we're going to abuse the hell out of this. So let's start off with six, five, four, eight, five, four, six, nine. Remember the direction and how these things work. All right, we get a Giga Tomahawk D. That's nice. Zero, 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 five, two, one. Four. If I only was entering these the correct way. I forget which direction is which in terms of rolling the numbers a lot, so yeah. 100 freeze fragments. That's useful because we will need those for a quest later, I believe. Four, four, eight, six, two, one, seven, nine. And yes, usually you find these from playing the game. I just sort of consider this a little bit of evening the playing field. And there's our Marissa asterisk. That is amazingly nice to get. Because that can just go in any folder. And it makes our lives a little bit easier. Marissa's chip shoots a linear beam that does like 100 electric damage. So yeah. Slow gauge S. That is a little less useful because we are not going to be playing multiplayer of this, likely at all. I think there is multiplayer. I haven't really investigated for what are perhaps understandable reasons. And yes, Aurasword 3Z. Code on that is not great, but it's a pretty powerful chip, so I, I like that. That's pretty nice. One, 
three, two. Max Gauge Star. That is uh, basically just full cust, I think. Which, again, is still pretty powerful, so that's going to go in immediately. Monkey Pull 3H. That's the equivalent of Lance. It attacks the back row. Get the 106 one, alright? 1, 9, 6, 4, 5, 2, 3, 3. Lost Area. That... I don't remember what that does. I think that... Well, we'll see it in a second, I guess. I can go look at it. Four, eight, nine, six, six, three, two, five. Hold air three, J. Nice enough. That's pretty solid. Not to be argued too much with. I think the damage on that gets to be pretty good if we use it correctly. Six, nine, five. Sandpit 3C. Very good and in a code that we will probably be using quite a bit. Zero, 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 four, six, zero, zero. One I'm shocked is actually real. 100 bug fragments. Very nice. Nine seven three five eight six one four and our strong shield. I have to look at that in a moment as well. Right, and lastly, five nine seven five four. Five, six, five. What do you got for us? Oh, is that nothing? Did I did I do that wrong? Did I enter it wrong? I'm gonna retry it. I also realized, yeah, I have another one that I forgot to mention. Six, five. Okay, yeah, I fucked it up. And fast gauge, D. D is not really the most useful code as far as I can remember, so eh. It's still, not gonna complain. And we got the add-on dead body. That one is not something I'm gonna use, but it's pretty hilarious. Okay, so these, these like purple add-ons, they give you back, uh, Navi specs for this, but they give you a pretty serious, a pretty serious downside. So for this, we would be starting with only one row. Pretty harsh. R is Star Shield, which I don't remember what that is offhand. So that's not necessarily the most useful advice, but that would let us uh, have a shield for a little while. And Dead Body, look at this return, but our max HP becomes one. We can't take a hit with this. So, that's not my style. I play like a complete goon. And as a result, we're not going to do that. But we are going to do a couple of final things here. All right, fast gauge, sand pit C, cold air. Only 30. That's not as strong as I thought it was. Monkey pole. That's pretty good damage. Aura sword, 3. That's just Aura Sword three times. They pierce if you have an Aura. Z Code is as much of a pain as you would expect. Slow Gauge is really expensive and hard to use. Marissa, Max Gauge. This is the thing that we want to get in here post haste. Meanwhile, I'm also like, what else do I take out for? The other Marissa. 
Ah, uh, yes, and here, Gigahawk. This will either go around the outside of the stage if we are on the top or bottom row, or if we're in the middle row, it shoots the uh, the axe to the end of the to the back of the enemy's area, and it returns. So that's a pretty decent little bit of equipment there. Let's actually take that out. I actually like having the at least the one Venom shot in there in Asterisk. Let's go find Rika real quick, and let's see if we can fight Tank Man. Let's get a little extra content out of this stream. Even though I've been at this for a bit of time. Friendly battles against your friends. If you lose, you don't game over. But if you lose fights against enemies on the internet, then yeah, you do game over. Alright, let's bust a ramp. Hey, you took a moment there. And yes, by the way, Tank Man is going to be pretty slow moving for now. And do attacks that don't really do a ton. But later on, he will actually be quite a tough fight. He will move pretty fast. He will attack pretty fast. They'll all hit multiple parts of the area. It will be frustrating to deal with, needless to say. Oh, I think we just canceled his missiles. Or are they that late to show up, which would be uh, pretty interesting. That's for sure. Yeah, not a hard fight at this juncture, and we get Tank Man T, which is just listed as Tank M in this in this game. Uh, there is an input code that you can do during that attack to change what it does, but I don't know what it is offhand. So, yeah, 